Welcome in to the first official episode of Numbers on the Board. Numbers on the Board, yes, we back. The boys are back. The boys are back in town. Ah, it feels so good, man. I've been waiting for this day. Yeah. Today felt like the first day of school. It, it really did. did. It, it really was did. hard to sleep last night for me. You had your fit all planned out. Yes. Yeah, look at him. That boy got the Uggs on. <laughs> the Uggs on. <laughs> little comfy fit. I, you know, I had to bust out a little something. I see Pete with the nice little jacket over there. I ain't seen him with that. No, I did. This is just in my closet. I'm like, what should I wear? And I realized I had something I hadn't worn before. So that's why it's good to just shop randomly. Yeah. And then not be in a rush to put it on because then you have something for when you need it. Because I was sure, like, man. I got to I got to come with something. I got to I got to ask something. <laughs> like Russell so, Westbrook, you have to, you know. Yeah, what I'm you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, it's been, it's, it's good back. to see y'all in person. And it it's is. just amazing being in a new studio. Like the vibe in here is just immaculate. Like it's the lighting is amazing. Having this basketball behind us is just so crazy. The basketball court behind us with yeah. the net and there. Did like, you pick this out? We all did. I I, I just said I, yeah. I, I didn't actually, no, no, no. Somebody <laughs> picked it. There, no, I, I threw the number in. Okay. You said you had the number two. Derek, he suggested something. Oh, the other one. one. Oh, that was yeah. so, it was pretty bad. Woo. That was so, like, stock. You said it was generic. It was so generic. It was like a person in a grayscale holding a basketball. <laughs> I'm the tallest. It life. looked like the cover of a movie that you would probably see. On like a book cover. A, yeah. a Tubi movie. Yes, a Tubi, <laughs> a Tubi movie. movie. Yeah, a Tubi <laughs> movie. Before we get into it, I want to remind you guys at home. Leave a like. Subscribe, baby. We're on a whole new YouTube channel. Go over to the audio platform, Spotify, Apple. We're building all of those back up. The other channel we have built, over 300,000 subscribers. We need that on top of more. And we can't do that without y'all. Without y'all. We can't put numbers on the board without them. Yeah, exactly. Our fan base put numbers on the board, too. Man, when we released our two announcements, first the announcement for the name oh, and yeah. the announcement that we were teaming up with Omaha slash ESPN, the fans, the, the viewers we went, crazy. went crazy. And we want to say we appreciate y'all for all the support because transitioning to a new company slash transitioning to a new name is, is rough. It's, it's rough. Yeah, rebranding can also always be tough because like, yeah. you can get lost a little bit just because nobody really remembers your name. Right. Yeah, everybody can't do that. We, yeah. We're definitely fortunate and blessed enough to have the type of community and support to be able to do that. And, and you know, the funny thing is we knew, we know our people and mm-hmm. we knew they were going to show out. So we were extremely confident in y'all and it was good to see that we were right. You know what I mean? And um, I think we already, where, where were we on the charts before we ever dropped? I think we were number four. Before we even basketball. dropped this We haven't even dropped an episode. So haven't dropped an episode. Just a teaser. That just shows how remarkable you guys are. So we appreciate it. And I'm so happy to have the cat out of the bag, like to mm-hmm. be able to announce that and, you know, for the Peyton Manning commercial video to come out. That was such a tough thing to hold a secret. Yeah. And yeah, every was. single day you could not tweet anything without them saying, when's it coming out? What's going on? What you doing this? I got DMs guessing. Y'all are with, y'all with these people. <laughs> yes. Y'all doing it with these people. Y'all saying this. Y'all did this. And I'm like, bro, we're going to tell y'all. I promise <laughs> you this is. So now y'all see why we didn't respond in a tweet. That, that yeah. announcement and so much work was put in to give y'all a grand you know, um, announcement instead of just going on Twitter, replying to somebody, yeah, this is what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we made our decision in October. Yeah. yeah. So for the last couple months, we've just been waiting for January, waiting for January. And behind the scenes, working and stockpiling yep. things yeah. to give y'all something that y'all deserve, which was. That Peyton video, though, it was just having that just sitting and knowing it's coming out eventually was just so hard because it was so well put together. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like. It's just Man. a it's just a flex too. Yeah. To be in the room with Peyton Manning and being and to shoot a video with them. It's just a flex. That's your boss man? Yeah. That's boss man. Yeah. <laughs> My QB on Madden though. <laughs> well, let's get into hoops. This is our first official episode of twenty twenty four. Oh man. Can we get to our first official episode uh-huh. of twenty twenty four? Yeah. Our first official episode in the, in how long though? Since That's the twenty first of December. Yeah, a lot of the people have been waiting for us to say like three anything weeks? collectively yeah. on basketball. A lot has happened, so yeah, a lot of things are carrying over. Like, drop the mic. That boy, Mike Fancy, ain't he? He is. Y'all see with your nice little intro. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the only one. Today's drop the mic. Do you find it more impressive to guard well without fouling, or to be you know create well and play make well without turning it over? So which way are you looking more at the offensive end or the defensive end? Is it kind of harder to accomplish that? Who is somebody that defends well without foul? Jimmy Butler. Mm. I remember, and this and this kind of comes up from him. It was a it was a, a, a while back ago, but it was like the fourth quarter, and they were going against a very good team. And you know, Jimmy Butler is going to put a, a lot onto that defensive end. It was the f- fourth quarter. He picked up his first foul, and it's mm. just like. 
that's honestly like very impressive to do. You know who the poster boy for this is? Who? Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, Kawhi. He has more Kawhi steals in his career in than yeah. fouls. Yeah. I find that extremely impressive. Especially because defenders don't get the same leeway as offensive players. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where you got a lot of people that know how to work the rules around to, to get your hand in the cookie jar and then boom, I'm drawing a foul. So personally, as a guy, y'all known me for a decade at this point. Y'all know I prioritize defense over everything. I think having an A plus defender that can play forty minutes a game and you ain't got to worry about him potentially getting some foul trouble. Mm-hmm. I'm taking that over. I wish the he was. I wish he was like that when we played pro am. But you know he we be having. He got to get. It. He got to reach. I'm he got to uh, I think it also the question kind of stemmed from too, is this is a while back when the Kings were playing OKC. They had nobody that just could not foul Shea. Mm. Anytime Shea got to the bucket, it was a whistle, whistle, whistle. And then you have to constantly keep the, uh, switching defenders and everything like that. And it's hard to guard these people. It's hard to guard people like Luka. It's hard to guard people like Joel Embiid and not be in foul trouble. Yeah, um, I respect y'all answers and y'all perspective on it. I just think when you talk about creating mm-hmm. offensively, I, I got to get a leeway to that. When, I, when I'm watching basketball and I'm seeing somebody like Tyrese Halliburton put up 26, 28 points, and he's also giving me 14, 15 assists with no turnovers. To me, that is by far more impressive. Um, and I'm looking at that type of creation. Now, if you're telling me there's somebody who's an isolation scorer and he's trying to get his and he's just missing shots, that's one thing. But the engine of an offense to go and put up these gaudy numbers um, on an assist side and to, to do it without turning the ball over, mm-hmm. to me, is phenomenal. Because you have defenses that are put in place to do that. They're pressuring you. They're they're trapping the doubles uh, or they're trapping off of the pick and rolls. You know, they're they're specifically trying to limit you from doing it and they know what you're trying to do. And yet they still can't stop it. To me, that is a that's a lot more impressive than defending without fouling. And I think it's in today's game it's extremely hard to do. And I'm trying to give leeway to the defenders because. We saw the Trey Young, Tyrese Maxey to foul yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Whenever you have that, and they, it, it's it, it's extremely hard to have me require somebody to to defend without fouling. A lot of times, as a as a coach or as somebody on the floor, I'm a, I'm gonna encourage my guy to foul, mm-hmm. not to get in foul trouble, but yeah, make them feel you. We say that all the Play time. Physical. Make, make yeah. them yeah, feel I you. Do. Feel, set the yeah, tone. You know what I mean. Be smart. Definitely don't get three fouls in the first first half, but you establish. Um, a certain level of intensity when you let them know. I think p- players that do that well, they're very good at limiting the bad fouls. Mm-hmm. I think there was a, when the Timberwolves played the Magic, Ant was in foul trouble, and he came back in and got another foul literally right, a, or like right away because he just tried to get open, and he kind of pushed off, and they whistled. So yeah. Is that three fouls in the first quarter? I think it, yeah. it was something like that, and it's like, what are you supposed to do at that point, you yeah. know? I just think when you sp- when you talked about Shea against the Kings, you know, when you think about like '90s basketball, that's the type of thing that they did. You go on, you go in the paint, they're gonna put you on your behind just to let you know mm-hmm. when you come in here, you have to now be weary of that. And now for the rest of the game, for the rest of the remaining quarters, in the back of your mind, or maybe it's sometimes in the front of your mind, depending on your size, you're like, ah, do I want to go back in here? Because I know the price I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. pay. So yeah. Uh, for me, it'll probably be the defending without fouling because, like, the game Go now is – huh? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, the game now is literally offensively oriented. So, like, the referees are now pretty much catering to the offensive players most of the time just because that's the thing that sells tickets. Mm-hmm. So, pretty much, if you can defend without fouling at a high level, I think, for me, that holds a lot of value just because you're at a disadvantage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you all feel about them fouls? That most of you see, like, players kind of like Trey Young where they kind of – Go into the body first, and then they kind of like throw up the little push. Oh shot. yeah, Trey Young, Austin Reeves, Austin Reeves oh. does it too. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like a like a fifty fifty type call. Mostly, I feel like the defenders are in like a wrong place for it, mm-hmm. yeah. and they just kind of get called for, it and it's kind of iffy. But those are the fouls people be complaining about. Like, how is this man shooting twelve free throws when he's getting four free throws like that? You know, they buckle down a little bit more in the playoffs. Yeah, this should be fine by then. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I get it. Um but, you know, I, I think fouls are fouls. Mm-hmm. Fact, you know what I mean? Like, we know when something is being altered or something. But that type of manipulation, I'm not a fan of. I'm okay with the, uh, you know, James Harden used to go, him and DeRozan, they would go and attack and they would put the ball low and go up. That's affecting the, the you, you going up for a layup. But me just stopping on the brakes and just doing that, <laughs> like, that, <laughs> that, that, that I, I don't know how much of a, of a fan I am of that. 
Um, let me let me ask you Mike. Do. The other day, the Lakers played the Raps. Mm-hmm. Obviously, the conversation from that was about the referee and the foul and twenty three free throws versus two free throws in the fourth quarter. We th- that was an episode that I wish we were able to film because I wanted to hear your take as a Lakers fan watching that game. Just throwing like throwing out both teams, that discrepancy is wild. Okay. It's just wild, just flat out wild, honestly. Like I couldn't sort of say anything about that. I always be like, Man, it kinda goes both ways. We just got the lucky end of the sword that way. Mm-hmm. We've been on the other side sometimes too, but I don't know. It it, it kinda I don't know. Fouls kinda they don't take away from the game, but sometimes they can be a really big part of the game. It's a little big part of the game if that kinda makes sense. Did you agree with LeBron? When he said, I felt like they were fouling and we weren't? No, I didn't. Because I rewatched the whole fourth quarter <laughs> yeah. and y'all were fouling too. Yeah. And you know? it was like some questionable fouls on the Raptors. Where yes. I was like, ah, that's yes. not really a foul. I think that's the most frustrating <laughs> part of basketball in today's yeah. landscape at every level. Is like, that's fine. If, you wanna, if, if we're going to have a game where we're fouling, just have to call it both sides. Facts. I do agree with some of what you're saying, though, Mike. It's never going to be. I, I hate when that's, fans that think that it should be 10-10. Yeah, no, five. that's the that's problem. It's never going to happen. Somebody mm-hmm. has to lead the same way somebody has to win the game. Majority of the time when I hear people complain about the free throw disparity, I'm like, okay, show me the clips in which your team got fouled and didn't get the call. Yeah. The Raptors fans in that game had – footage <laughs> like it, it was moments it was moments in that one there was a Thaddeus Young pick and roll play where he got pushed in the side while he was going up there's another Scotty Barnes play on Anthony Davis where he didn't get the whistle but on the exact same play Austin Reeves got a whistle against it might have been Scotty Barnes and then there was uh one more play that I can't remember off the top of my head there were three different instances where they should have got free throws yeah and in a one-point game those three different interest instances can be a win you look right. back on those you look back on those for sure but at the end of the day I mean, the Raptors probably making some big moves anyway, so it might not matter. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. It might not matter. Uh, D Mills. Time for room, the. I don't know Mills. <laughs> he got so many Mills. segments, he don't even know hey, which man, one we, we got. We're getting into the Mills Mans of the Week this week. Look at that face. <laughs> hey, man, you got whoever gets this award for the first time in 2024, they get the official Mills Mans of the Week with my face on it. That's crazy, yeah. And, uh, wait, so wait, wait, wait. Can that, I oh, guess yeah, it? yeah. KB wants to guess. Is that, I got to guess, too. Is that your hungry face or what face was that on it? I don't know. I, I don't think know that was a sexy face. face. I, I just literally don't know where that face I didn't ask you where it came from. Oh. I said, when you saw that, what face I is I just that? looked like a happy face. So did you just eat? Yeah, probably. Okay. <laughs> did you just eat? Okay. <laughs> I think we, we were throwing out guesses beforehand. I got yeah. one in my mind. Is it Victor Wibanyama? No. Is it Kyrie Irving? No. Okay. Ooh, do you have a guess? Mine was Jalen Brunson. Okay. It's probably Shea. nice. Nice, good considerations, but uh, I went with one of the the man on one of the hottest teams in the league, Paul George. Oh, I said that he, he did. He say, did, but he, he did say, tell I, you he wasn't going to tell you. I was going to tell right. you, yeah, but, he he, but he also didn't say that if he said one of the names. He was just kind of like. Yeah, I was y'all, just y'all guessing let, some guys on this. I was just letting y'all guess. What, what did Paul George do this week to get the meals? Paul George. Uh, let's, let me read y'all the stats. So he had a 25-point, 25-7 rebound game against the Phoenix Suns. Big game, game for them. Uh, against the Raptors the other day, 29-7-6. Last Easy. night he put up 37-3-1. Easy. Um, Paul George has been on the tear. Now, and it seems like this team is like perfectly put together where Kawhi can have a week, Paul George can have a week, and nobody gets in each other's way. Mm-hmm. James and I think Harden it, can have a week. Yeah, James Harden can have a week. Like it, and it's just amazing to see that a team with three all stars like they can complement each other and let the hot hand ride for a minute. Mm-hmm. And then when it's time for someone else to take over, they kind of just transition into it. And I think that's a big reason why they've kind of went from like that slump at the beginning to now they're like transcending into like probably the most deadly team in the league right now. When you talk about winning a championship, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa! In my opinion, okay. Well, I can't, I, <laughs> can't, I can't disagree with your opinion. Well, <laughs> well I can disagree with your opinion, but uh, the, whoa, whoa, the Denver whoa. Nuggets is still. I mean, they're still the de- most dangerous team in the league, in my opinion. Oh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, the Clippers are dangerous. They're dangerous. <laughs> but he said most dangerous. I think they're the most dangerous. And if series started. I think th- I, th- I think I'm agreeing with Derek. Oh, y'all are bugging. <laughs> it ain't got – it It has nothing to do with the Nuggets. It's just the yeah. fact that if this go – if they are – both teams at their peak, at mm-hmm. their perfectest level, I'm scared of the Clippers. <laughs> you <laughs> you know who I'll be scared they, of? The Clippers are figuring it, figuring it out in a perfect world with Kawhi, Paul George, and James Harden. Well, the that Clippers is, have never had a perfect world, so it would just be different yeah. for them to have it now. For sure. Um, but, but this it, season is a lot different than any season for that sure. they've had. For sure. They any still don't season. have the 
the one thing they still can make up twenty million dollars in, in a potential trade, which is interesting. They still got one first round pick that they maybe they could use. But in the series, and we we speaking so far in the future at this point, we're only halfway through the year. For sure. Um that brother Jokic. They don't yeah. have an answer. That's yeah. no, I, w- I wouldn't agree. I, but yeah, they also, I you could, I could also say they don't have an answer for Kawhi. Playoff Kawhi is another monster. What are you going to do? Put oh. MPJ on him? Free cheese. I, I think it's Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon. I mean, the yeah, real then, then, then MPJ, then MPJ is on Paul George. On Paul George. <laughs> <laughs> and now Jamal we'll Murray's on James Harden. <laughs> yeah. Jamal right. Murray is, is. Oh, they got KCP. KCP is a chase. Here's some stats about the Clippers while we're here. Because uh, the way they've been doing things is ridiculous. Yeah. We got the James Harden pick and roll with Zubac. In the first five games of the season, it was awful. Yeah, Zubac and now is not ready for those passes. It's one of the best pick and rolls in all of basketball. And you spread that out with Norman Powell, who's shooting 49% on catch and shoot threes. Yeah. Amazing. Kawhi Leonard shooting 45.6% on catch and shoot threes. Paul George is shooting 44% on catch and shoot threes. And when it's not Harden with the ball, him on a catch and shoot is 43%. Yeah. So they got four players in their top six rotation. That are forty plus percent on catch and shoot. It's hard. They're impossible to guard because of that. And that I is. think this is showing you the James Harden effect, um, because like he generates so much attention in that pick and roll that now Kawhi and Paul George are getting open looks that they probably never thought they would ever. And see. all they got to do is make them. Yeah, he's yeah. literally giving them the point guard play that that we've been talking about for like the last four years that mm-hmm. they needed. And he's coming out and he's executing on a they high They look level. sharp. Yeah, they do. Compared to when they first started, they looked a little bit indecisive. Looked like they were still trying to gel and everything. Which makes but sense. now it's just yeah. like, man, I, I know James Harden, I'm getting him the ball when we run it because he's going to find whoever. Like, Paul George is running off screens trying to get his because he can he can get the all-ball movement shots and everything like yeah. that while Kawhi is trying to get his ISO. And James Harden is trying to kind of being like the overseer of it, and it's working for them. Like, they look really good. The defense has been all right. Well, the defense has been really it's good. It's been amazing, yeah. And then the offense has been like, you really can't stop them. Yeah. They're going to find some way to get the, their shots up. One thing that I love – that I'm seeing now that we just haven't seen since maybe the first year because it was new. Everybody just looks comfortable and they look at ease and they look like they're settled. The The pressure that the, the, that was once on this team, it, it just seems it's there. Don't get me wrong. They mm-hmm. have to deliver. They have to stay healthy. They have to perform in the playoffs. But everything just falls into place. And D. Mills just said the James Harden effect, which I – can agree there's some James Harden effect on the floor, but I just think even just in a team structure way, I just think that everybody kind of falls in their place and in the role. You have Paul George who can catch and shoot. You mentioned the nights where Kawhi can go off. He's still doing his thing. He had the tween spin baseline of mid-range jumper. I forget who that was against. He still has moments he can do that. Paul George had the isolation on the right side of the floor in the Pelicans game against Jose Alvarado. They still have space to be able to do that. Norman Powell checks in, and he gets to go crazy and and lay up and transition and shoot threes. Russell Westbrook is knocking down shots, taking on a leadership role. P.J. Tucker ain't playing no more. Okay, I'm hitting threes. Russell Westbrook is doing P.J. Tucker uh, three-point celebration. Somebody got to do it. Um, um, they got. They picked up Daniel Tice. He fit right he in. He fit right yeah. in. He fit right Hubbard in. He lost his spot because Daniel Tice stretches the floor. Incredible element that he brings. Terrence Mann is now starting. Um, I just love how everything fits in place. Kawhi signs the extension that sets up Paul George to sign the extension. They're going to stay. That should leave some more money because they – well, we don't know Paul George yet, but mm-hmm. they're both not taking the max. Yeah, the, let me give it a number. Three money years, $152.4 million extension. No player option on the last year, completely committed. Um, but, again, like you mentioned, not a max. And leaves, so leaves room. Harden can now potentially rejoin, and they can just comfortably play the play their basketball. Um, and and I like it. And they're having fun. It seems like Tyron Lue told us to give them time. Yep. And um, Tyron Lue has been coaching his butt off, so we got to mm-hmm. give him credit there. Defensively, they're doing their thing, which I think is a big part of um, p- part of them going far. We know that they're going to be able to score. But the fact that they can do what they do defensively is also another key element. So I like them. I do agree with what you're saying. This is not a team that we're writing off. You still have to take into consideration the Denver Nuggets. Of course, they earn their respect and they have that man. I got Clippers at two though. So it's uh, not, I'm not I'm, when I was disagreeing. It wasn't like I'm thinking that they're, you know, at the bottom. I think they're sure. number two for me at the moment. Um, you still have to consider those two young teams uh, that we still haven't seen in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Hey, experience is important, but we've seen teams not necessarily have the experience that you would want on paper and still do damage in the playoffs. So um, I'm definitely looking at the Clippers, like you said, at number two, though, and um, potentially number one. We'll, they can we'll get see. Yeah. They could get there. Shout out to Brody, man. Yes. Shout out to Brody. For yes. the last four years, we've been saying that the Clippers just needed some playmaking, and now they got – the playmaker in James Harden. Yeah. He's not a system player. Russ be having some defensive Oh, moments. Oh, he been yeah, locking yeah. in. Yes. Because 
I think it's just easier for him, and I, I appreciate that he accepted his role because a lot of people, especially a former superstar, it's difficult for them to eventually accept the role. And it was difficult when he was with the Lakers. Yeah. And but they, I don't know if it's coaching or the the different culture of the Clippers versus Lakers, but they got the, got him to buy in. Where some nights it's fifteen minutes, but in those say, fifteen fi- minutes, it's boom. fifteen to twenty minutes is where Russell is, and he's gonna do his thing. Perfect role for what yeah. the energy that he brings on yeah, the night. He's still basis. sitting on the bench celebrating. Like the body, the body yep. language is positive and amazing. I think the difference is winning can do a lot of things. The winning, and I said I, that when they was on that lose. I was like, <laughs> winning will do anything for yeah. you. He's, I think he's Change also like quick. he has a leadership role on his team that I think is. Because of his personality and how he is versus, like, Kawhi is a laid-back guy. Paul George is a laid-back guy. It allows him to just be that leader and that voice. And if he's setting the tone, everything is – all cards on the table when it comes to Russ versus the Lakers. The Lakers' culture and the leadership – not to question LeBron's leadership because, obviously, LeBron it's is – a lack shown, of accountability. It's a Ooh. lack of accountability. It's always rumor central. It's always uh, some leaks. <laughs> it's always, like – um, the coach is having issues with a player. Indirect Things statements. Things are highlighted. You, you, we lose by 30. Are highlighted. They come interview me. Yeah, we got to make shots. Knowing you just went all 11 from three. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just make three-point shots that we have, then we'll probably win more games. And it's like indirectly I'm talking about Rus- uh, D'Angelo Russell. Or right now I'm talking about, yeah, we got to stay healthy. Knowing Anthony Davis just missed the last 12 games. <laughs> and now I can only imagine how that indirect – talk is just in the atmosphere there and there's just no stability not to make this a laker thing but the coach is always on the hot seat there's three starters not always anymore. on the they, they block. said they committed to him so i don't buy that it. was a weak rumor D- don't they buy said it. it's over i don't, I don't know why they said don't that. buy it <laughs> they've said a lot that has happened right after everything was good with what's, Russ, what's right? the latest you can go into the nba season with firing your coach i don't we're halfway through i don't think he's going to get fired this year it might be an off season, but the oh, fact, different. Yeah, but the fact that they would have had how many coaches is that? This will if they fire Darvin Ham, the next coach will be what the fourth coach. We had Luke Walton, we had Frank Vogel with Darvin Ham, and then this new guy. And the five years of LeBron being there, that's not. Well, I guess six years now. That's not the stability you want when you're a team that's telling us that you're competing for championships. The Frank Vogel firing was just year. a mistake. That, yes. Yeah, yeah. You can't look past that and say that that was a success. All the time that Anthony Davis and LeBron was missing those post two years after the bubble championship, mm-hmm. he, I don't I don't think he deserved to be fired. And, yeah. Yeah, and he was trying to in- implement Russell Westbrook. They blamed Frank Vogel for it not working. Star like Rob Palenka like, didn't make the trade. Yeah, and I'm just like. Now, he redeemed himself a little bit. The last couple of trades he's made have been good. But here they are again, below 500. That's too much like we weren't supposed to talk about the Lakers. We, but it was a good segue because we was talking about coaching. And stability. Bring up my boy, man. You got you Eric have Spostra. Num- numbers right over there. That boy Eric Spostra just got paid. Um, the the most money given to a coach in a single contract, eight years, one hundred and twenty plus. Woe said is one hundred and twenty plus million. So I'm guessing there's incentives. Maybe some yeah. incentives. Yeah, incentives for like championships and stuff like that makes sense. And that is the most money committed to a coach in history, and nobody deserves it more. Right for this, him. this is this is rightfully so. I I love this because I love what they have established. There is a lot of talk about heat culture and different things like that, but um, it's 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 really the back of him and Pat Riley, and I just think that this is a good example. We talk about the copycat league in the NBA where a team goes in a certain direction. Oh, let's do this. They're shooting threes a lot. Let's do that. They're playing small ball. This is the copycat that the league needs to start. Stability at the coaching position. And I know a lot of people's responses are going to be, man, you, they ain't just got Spolster just sitting around. They didn't have Spolster sitting around when the Miami Heat hired him. This is a guy that they found within their organization who worked his way up, grinded. They put him in a position of power. They stood by him. They empowered him even more. In his first stint, they had LeBron James, one of the best players of all time, kind of going in a different direction. And they stood there by him and essentially picked him over that. And now we see that they get the fruits of the labor over all of these years. So I just want to see a little bit more of that in the NBA, taking mm-hmm. taking more chances. We see we keep seeing the same coaches get fired and hired. I'm never going to understand that. Yeah, th- th- it's the same thing. Like like we need new voices, new faces, new 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 mindsets, new ideologies. You keep why would I hire a guy who just got fired the last three spots he was at? With but you know what? Not, but when you say that, I don't. I think it is new new blood coming in every season. There's not a, not as much not as much as I think it should be when you see guys like Eric Spoelstra. Why do, and I hate to put names on it, but why 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 don't the Hornets have a new fresh young coach? Oh, the Hornets are oh, ran poorly yeah. though. 
<laughs> like they're just one of the three worst ran teams in all the basketball. I just I, w- I would never understand that. Mm. I would never understand that. Yeah, I mean, I think when you do have a like a solidified coach and you allow him to solidify a culture, I think it kind of helps you as an organization because like players now know what to expect when they come there. Players know when they go to Miami, they got to be in shape. If you're not in shape, you're not playing. Um, and I think that right there is just a statement of what you need to do as a basketball player. They really want your BMI to be below a certain level mm-hmm. in order for you to be on the court, in order for you to perform at your highest level. Role play, it's not a coincidence that role players go to Miami and you kind of see, like, the best version of them in Miami. Like, Spo somehow gets the best out of these players that we've never heard of. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the culture. There's a bar. Yeah. 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 I mean, and to before you go, yeah. to your point, the new blood. I'm glad you said the new blood that, that comes in. They're the ones that I, I think I love. The Will Hardys yeah. in Utah. I, I'm going to read, you, I'm gonna read you everybody that's currently coaching the, a team that was their first team. Joe Mazzula, Steve Kerr. Joe Mazzula, we have to put a asterisk because it's not. He was kind of like. That was he a was situation. Just, he was, yeah, he just kind of. But he's still a coach, and he, he got an uh, opportunity, and he got an extension after the opportunity. He, he's a first-time coach. He, he wouldn't be in this he, position he if is, he didn't do what he did. But that's what it is. It's like he, But he still, he still counts. He does, but I'm just saying we put a we, It's just a little bit of an Darvin asterisk. Darvin Ham, <laughs> um, Eric Spolstra, Adrian Griffin, Chris Finch, Willie Green, Mark Daytonall, Jamal Mosley, Chauncey Billups, Greg Popovich, Darko Ryakovich, Will Hardy, Wes Unsell Jr., and who did I forget? I, I, I forgot one name. Taylor Jenkins. That's this is also like seventy percent of the league. It's also Steve Kerr. A, a Steve decent Kerr amount of Kerr. team. Yeah, I said Steve Kerr. Okay. And the only recycle guy. These are the recycle guys. Mike Brown been around for twenty years coaching yeah. a million teams. Frank Vogel. Nick Nurse is only on his second team because he yeah, was yeah. he was Raptors before that. Tom Thibodeau's been around. Uh, Tyron Lue's been on, on a couple co- coaching staffs. Uh, Rick Carlisle. Even Ime Udoka is really a second team. It could be first yeah. team. Same thing which I just said, but the yep. other way. Um, Monty Williams has been around. Mike Jason Malone. Kidd's been a, been a couple places. Mike Malone. But, like, for the most part, there's a lot of coaches that are on their first spot and are mm-hmm. new. Like, Will Hardy just got here two years ago. We can agree that he's like a top five coach. Yeah, I yeah. love you Will Hardy. Um, and it's, you can say the same thing about uh, no, Mark Dayton. Mark Dayton. No, that's yeah, a yeah. good example. Yeah. But, like, Dayton. for example, a team like the Brooklyn Nets, mm-hmm. they went out. <laughs> and they had got Steve Nash. They had got Steve Nash. And then they went to Jock Vaughn, who mm-hmm. was a coach in Orlando. Like, I, I feel like that's a situation where, and again, no, sl- no slack uh, or slack on Jock Vaughn, but that's a situation where, based on the, the time frame that they're in, I, w- I would like to see a, a nice young voice yeah. or fresh face over there. Like, when you're saying a <sighs> team going into a rebuilding phase, they should stay away from, like, the veteran – Coaches, they should go with a I younger. I think that when when coach. that happened, when they made the trade to get rid of Kevin and get rid of Kyrie, and then eventually Jacques Vaughn got that extension, I thought we were all pretty happy about it because he was able to to traverse the waters in a way where like they were still decent. They were post, and it's like that extension don't look bad because at least at that time the random pieces of people that they put together were decent, and he they, was doing a good job. They were, but I think we also had some fools go. I think some guys play, played a lot better than they were, and they had already had some success because of Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. This year, we're not getting the same Nick Claxton from last year. No. no. This year – Not Mikael. I'm, not, no, I'm no. not convinced Mikael is the number one option. This year, Cam Johnson continues to look cool, not at the price you paid him at. I don't know the state of this team. Um, and if they had, if they were playing at the way that these two projected them at the start of the season, which was wild yeah. in the moment, <laughs> even crazier now that we've been watching. I thought we were getting a healthy Ben Simmons. But th- why would you? I, I didn't even. You've been doing this that. job for eight years now. <laughs> I why didn't would even you fully think that? Take that into consideration. I hope for I that, but I didn't. I don't. Like, I don't know if I thought that. I hope for. He's though. a TikToker now. I hope for like like a month. <laughs> but no, yeah. that's good to hear that all those names. I didn't. I didn't look at it in in that perspective, but I'm glad to hear that we have all of those names, and hopefully we can start to get more. and And I guess a part of what also what I'm saying is when you look at how the Heat did it, it was like it was in in the organization. He was already there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was already Film there. Room, yeah, and he, he worked his way up versus like, oh man, um, he was. He was an assistant coach to our last coach. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> Adrian Griffin, come on. Cause bro, yeah. Even because we already know about all the accolades and all of, like, the stuff. And, like, he's mo- well-deserved. But, like, just watching him, if you love a game of basketball and just know how things work, I don't know how you couldn't love Eric Spolstra. Like, he's he's just a really good, great basketball mind. Mm-hmm. Like, what other teams do you see out here really successfully running zone? 
just that. like they they literally do that and it's not like he wants to it's like sometimes they had to they ain't had no bodies yeah. and that's and the, it's just like that's a good point that's i yeah. guess why i should also put out there again i'm not alluding to the fact that you can just find that air exposure i don't want to put that no, out there a, but maybe you can grow one mine. true put an 18 year old in the film room make them watch a million hours of basketball a week that's like saying that you could just do this with this job just you could. Go. You could put in your 100,000 hours. Put just your 100,000 hours in, like Dev in the lab. <laughs> Did y'all watch that series back in the day? No. no. Oh, man. Y'all missed that on, on Good Hoops content. Um, can, I, can I get two minutes to rant yes. about uh, my fan base after last night? Please yes. do. So last night, um, the Bulls had this thing called the Ring of Honor, where they brought in the biggest names in Bulls history, whether it be players, front office. A lot of people were honored. Michael Jordan was honored. He wasn't there. Because Michael Did Jordan doesn't this? come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I was, yeah. No, I was in a uh, Discord with y'all. And during halftime, it was it, it felt like an All Star game. Where the fifteen minute halftime that we normally get was actually twenty five minutes for the Bulls because this was a special, special day. A bunch of people that ran the organization that helped win six championships for the city of Chicago were there, and they were introducing everybody. Here's here's Chet Walker. Here's Bob Love, and then here's Jerry Krause. Booze across the the arena. Jerry Cross died in 2017. So in place of him was his widowed wife. Yes. And 20,000 fans booed. Well, I can't say everybody booed, but it felt as though 20,000 fans booed Jerry Cross's widow. And that's just not what Bulls basketball really is. Um, when it happened, we were all sitting in Discord, and I'm, and I'm like, man, they booing. I didn't recognize that he was being represented by his, his widowed wife. And, and there's videos that came out of she busted into tears. Yeah. Her husband passed away a few years ago. He helped build the teams that won six championships for this city, and he was booed. Now, Jerry Krause, Jerry Krause was not this saint. It wasn't like he was, he was a guy that was all hits, no misses, because he, he, he ended the Bulls. Because a lot of people's opinions about Jerry Krause revolve around what happened in the last dance. Yeah. The last dance made Michael Jordan look like a god, and everybody else look terrible. Scotty looked terrible. Jer- Jerry looked terrible. Everybody that was not Michael Jordan looked bad. So I think majority of the fans saw the last dance and was like, ah, awful guy. And he again, he was not the perfect guy. Yeah. He, he got rid of the Bulls after that championship. Everybody knows the last dance. And for a 10 years straight, he tried to prove the fact that he was more important to basketball than Michael Jordan. He's made some bad things. But he built those six teams that won the only pieces of jewelry we have in Chicago. For the Bulls. For the Bulls. For the Bulls. Don't disrespect my white socks. <laughs> in the Cubs. In the Black Cubs. I said my white socks. <laughs> oh, okay. Um... <laughs> It was 85 un- Bears. 85 Bears. It was unex- and it's unacceptable because that's just not what Chicago really has been. Um, yeah. And I was disappointed. In the moment, I, I was like, oh, okay, that's weird. But when they showed his wife and she put her hands up and there's tears on her face, I felt terrible for her. And it, did, it just didn't properly represent the fan base that I'm a part of. Mm-hmm. Well, that's th- that, see, those are the things that were, I try to let people know because we have a lot of fans who are fans of certain teams. The, the fandom in today's or maybe ever i don't know but fandom to me i i just i, I don't want to offend anybody but fandom to, it's kind of stupid in today's world i just it's just too much because it doesn't hold as much weight that's like even in this job that we have we come up here and our job is to take information and take what we see and analyze it we're analysts right but you can't say anything about anybody without it being hate. A team can lose. Portland, how much did Portland just lose by? 62. 60 I could come up here and say, man, Portland lost by 62. That's unacceptable. They'll have fans say something to me because I am pointing out a fact that they lost by 62. As a professional team, they had 77 points. And in, in a today's game, when we see teams have 70 and a half, they had 77. And people will find a way to get offended by that. A player come out, he has four ga- four points in a big-time game. You come out and say, we've seen players react to that. Oh, man, I can't believe Stephen A. Smith said this about me. Thing. Fandom is just like, I, I don't know. I just don't understand fandom today because in reality, it's okay for us to be fans of these organizations. I'm a big I'm a big Knicks fan. I love the Knicks. Everybody knows that. The Knicks don't pay any of my bills. The Knicks don't 100%. send me no free tickets. That's how when I, I go to like. Madison Square Garden, I pay the prices on all of the concessions. Yeah, <laughs> I feel the, the same price, thing. Too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love my Lakers, but I'm not. I never go to like. It doesn't affect me in a like 
in a different area just because they lost. I'm not like they lost and all of a sudden I got attitude. My oh, girlfriend. Man, my day now. ruined. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta. I, I'm mad going to sleep because they lost. Like I'll think about it for a second, but after that I'm I'm on to sort of my regular day. Yeah. They play again in two days. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna watch them again. Yeah, it is sad to see like twenty thousand people booing someone's sad wife. Like she's she's there representing her past husband. This is a big moment, probably for her and her family. And to hear that, you could definitely see the emotion just come out of her. Because mm-hmm. she didn't deserve that. Right. She did not deserve to be in that situation. So it is unfortunate. And it's, it's honestly no way to even make up for it. There's mm-hmm. no apologies that could be made or nothing. It's just kind of like she now has to live with that for down the rest of her life, knowing that her last moment of celebrating her husband was filled with booze. Yeah. On a day was, that was supposed was to be... All about love and, yeah. and yeah. look at us. We're bad. We're bad now, but don't you remember when we were good? Like yes. that's what yesterday was supposed to be. And then uh, Bulls fans got exactly what they were asking for. Second half, the Warriors were amazing. Yeah, Clay Thompson. And it's like hey, this is what you get for booing them. Yeah, it kind of just ruined the whole moment. <laughs> a, a book I recently read that opened up my mind as a person who's spent my entire 28 years of living being invested into sports, whether it's basketball, uh, NBA, M- NFL. MLB, college football, college basketball, um, Rethinking Fandom mm. by Craig Calcaterra. I hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Sound good to me. But it's just, it was a very good book, and I read it extremely recently, and it just goes into fandom and, and how we put a lot of stock into a lot of these different things that um, at the end of the day, it's a game. Mm-hmm. And a lot of us are fans, and it's okay to be invested, and we love it. But to a certain point, like Mike was alluding to, why would why would I allow something to ruin my day that I don't I, really have? I anything ain't gonna lie, and it's a little like tangent type of thing. But I feel the same way, and I kind of like I Madden drives me crazy. But I, I disconnect. I disconnect. That's why I want to play Anthony. <laughs> I disconnect, and I say it's just a game. Like I'm not. This is not like paying me not like i'm not going for no tournament or anything like i'm not no youtuber that's really gonna be putting these videos like so it should, you, you could be it should yeah i'm trying i'm here to have fun if you're trying to ruin my day and make me mad you, you have get, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go have, ahead i'm i'm just gonna step away because it's not but, that serious at but the end of the day. we got 40 we, minutes into the show before you mention man but mm-hmm. <laughs> when you can ruin somebody's day do you have that attitude because I'm pretty sure I've heard you say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to make him quit. Yeah, I want to I wanna do this. Yeah, yeah, forfeit. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I got him mad. I, I've heard it before. <laughs> if if you can, you always try to be the aggressor in those type of situations. In gaming. In, yeah. Okay. In 2K, would Let's you rather see. be the person that's in making gaming. them mad? Would you rather be the person that's busting they behind or reverse? Would you rather get in your behind? I bus? would rather us. I think you say ass. I, I, I want us to both be able to have <laughs> a good time. Yeah, you're in those situations. Okay. I want us to both to be able to have a good time and just tip your cap off. Mm-hmm. And like, even when I'm winning, true, true. Even, <laughs> even, even, that's why I say, even when I'm winning or even in 2K, a lot of times, all y'all have heard me say it. When it comes to 2K, I don't mind losing. It's a part of it. I've played sports my entire life. Yeah. I've, I've lost a million times. I've won a million times. It's, it comes with it. You make shots, you miss. Then you only. But you only win fifty percent of your games. But <laughs> it's hyperbole. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I, it's a way to lose. Mm-hmm. Now, if you losing like my boy Joe knows is saying, you got the six six, two hundred and fifty pound lock. Again, <laughs> I also I also don't mind <laughs> doing crazy. it. I don't mind doing it because I know that other person would not mind doing it to me too. Mm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That, that, that's the name of the game. Um, but yeah, man, I, I just think that that was that was distasteful. I think Chicago sports, even though I'm not a Bulls fan, I definitely have a place for the Bulls in my heart. I definitely root for all Chicago teams. I've been hearing you watching a lot um, more Bulls these last sure, couple of weeks. Sure. Yes, sir. It's been good basketball. Um, it's been nice. Chicago, the city, we, we, we have class. You know what I mean? We we do things um, at a top tier notch. You know what I'm saying? So even though I'm like I said, I'm not the biggest bulls fan I'm, i don't have you know what i'm saying I, I didn't like to see that and it was definitely distasteful because you had a lot of people that was there yeah um that put blood sweat and tears to hang up those banners you know michael jordan took time out to record like a three-minute video <laughs> this is my, it's michael jordan <laughs> the bare minimum by the yeah. way mike michael jordan <laughs> no michael jordan don't have to do another damn thing when it comes to basketball he if said, he don't want to he, at, did y'all see the video at the end of the video like, he oh yeah true at the end of the video he mentioned um he said, I always have a place for Chicago and be a Bulls fan, and I can't wait for us to raise another banner. And I'm like, Mike, we a long way away you from that. You know what I told him? The crazy thing about Michael Jordan, hmm. we've been doing this for years. We've met a lot of different players, players we've looked up to and have, have admired. Um, 
You know what I mean? That's that's always dope. Do y'all remember in Cleveland, the 75? Yeah. Just him being in the building with us, we was like, yeah. I know. I think <sighs> that's Michael Jordan a thousand knew, feet away. I could be wrong. Before <laughs> he we breathed in the same oxygen. Because he was reporting that it. he probably wouldn't be there. Yeah, yeah we was like, yeah. yeah, ain't no way, ain't no way Michael Jordan showing up. Because didn't he like, not show up for the picture? I said, I don't remember. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I remember. I thought I remember. Was it the him. picture there? It was electric, though. Yeah, but like before, they, they took a big picture in like this big office. I like can't before. remember. And like, but he, he was there. He was at that ceremony. Yeah. And that's I when uh, KB made me miss that Lil Wayne concert at halftime. Oh yeah. Yes, I Lil did. Wayne did have a concert. Yeah. <laughs> but that was like, I, there's no player for the word, man. Kobe. Yeah. Rest in peace, because that was just my favorite of all time. But like. I, I don't remember seeing another athlete yet, and I'm like, and I like a lot of guys. I love Alex Rodriguez, um, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, Jordan. Jordan is just like, I, I, it's just so for him to record that what video, you got on right now? he ain't have to do that. I Jordan's. got OVO 8s. Jordan's. These are Drake's. No, I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just joking. Uh, shout out to Jordan. But, yeah, he's just like a ghost. Before we get into our next topic, uh, let's hear from our sponsor. Why should you bet with Caesars Sportsbook? Two words, Caesars Rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesars can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. Shout out to our sponsor, Caesars. Um, We got a couple more pieces of news before we get into the bulk of the episode. Woj tweeted, ESPN sources, the NBA is still working on a final sign-off of the Players Association, but the 2024 NBA draft is prepared to move to two days, June 26th, June 27th in Brooklyn, Wednesday for the first round, Thursday for the sec- second round. Boys, how y'all feeling about this, a two-day draft? This is my rant. Mm, I'm listening. Okay. It's, it's like 30 seconds. Hey, let the draft expert get exactly. his rant about the draft. It ain't going to be as long as the Jerry Krause thing, but this is stupid. <laughs> this is horrible. As, a, as, again, somebody who's watched the draft for most of my life since I can remember, it's been an event. Before technology and phones, I used to sit with my dad sometimes, and I would have a notepad, and I would write down everybody was selected, what college they came to, the information, even if I already knew. That was just something ritual. Now we've been doing this. We've done this for work. Already these last few years we've done it. It's been too long for just the two rounds in one day. Now you're making it two days? I was going to say they got to sell more ads. They got to put more commercials up. Two days? Those ratings on that second day is going to be so bad. It's going to be bad. So you have some I think the first year is going to be fine. Some players are going to have to take two days of wearing a suit. They got to get two suits because I may be a late first round. (laughs) I may be a second rounder. I already don't have that money yet. Well, how many people get uh, invited to the green room anyway? No, 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 but I'm just saying, like, even if I'm not invited, you, you usually Oh, Bo Bo ended up being a second-round pick, and he was But even if you're room. not in the green room, you're doing something with your family. Oh, okay. Who ain't celebrating? Like. Nobody is just like, that's Yo- football. Yo- Jokic was asleep. That's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> football is usually where it's like, let me know if I get drafted because yeah, this yeah. is the seventh round. I'm going to just go do something now. But, like, the two rounds of basketball, you know what I mean? We I was there at Javon's party when he got drafted. We had a legitimate party. Mm-hmm. What it, so if Fred Van Vliet had a party too. He did. And he, he did. didn't get drafted, but he waited the whole imagine, yeah, having to put together a second a party. Second party. Because we might get drafted tomorrow yeah. and you still don't get drafted. And Isaiah party. Thomas was drafted at sixty. Yes. And he said he didn't he was even in watch. Gym. Yeah, yeah, he, he was, was in, in the gym. gym. Where did he say that at? On our podcast. On our podcast. Come Shout back on come back on the show. Numbers on the board. IT. In person. Yes. Come right here. We got room now. We got room. <laughs> Last set, me and Pierre was like this, right next to each other, mm-hmm. shoulder to shoulder. Now we got room for I can for hear his stomach growling. Now I don't know if I'm here that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you probably still will. Uh, but I'm gonna play devil's advocate, P. Play devil's advocate. Come on. Enlighten me. Cause I need to open I'm I'm trying to open up my mind more and more. I don't know if this is for because again, I read all the articles. I don't know if this is more for the viewing experience rather than saying that the second round comes around, we as GMs get three minutes to figure out if we want to draft who and who, if we want to trade. The, I'm just – I'm playing devil's advocate here. Second round picks matter. They have so much time beforehand. Even. But you don't right. know who's still going to be on the board and who's not. But you could have a short if you If we end the draft on, on the first day at 8 o'clock and I know I got the 32nd overall pick the next day, I have 18 hours – to figure out exactly who I want. Hey, Austin, can you put the, the frame in? It's just me and KB. I want to look right, and I want NBA teams to know. If you have a GM that needs a second day for second-round picks, hire me. I won't need it because we're going to be – it. we're talking about a draft that is months into the offseason. Yeah. Uh, you don't a have – it's, it's a couple weeks after the um the NBA finals. 
When is the NBA Finals? In June. It, but, but the, the true. June. But most teams, <laughs> there's a lot of teams. that There's 28 other teams that are fully prepared. There's only two teams playing mm-hmm. in June. So, <laughs> like, like, true, true. Let's, let's, you, don't ha- you don't know what you won't need. I don't. I'm just. I'm playing devil's advocate. Usually, like Derek said, you have a big board, and you what, should what, have a okay. realistic. Big what about board. what about from the perspective of the players getting drafted? What perspective of the players getting? I'm project a second round pick. I get drafted doing a Taco Bell commercial. I don't get my flowers. I don't get my highlight reel play on hi- ESPN. But that's something that can be highlighted and corrected and fixed mm-hmm. without a second day. The minute that Jokic became who he became, they should have said, "Okay." We need to have enough respect to not do that. Why did that ever was a thing? I don't know. Well, ads got you got to pay them bills. No, you can have an ad and then get back to the thing, especially in the second round. Right. Especially in the second <laughs> round. You you it's more than enough time because in my argument in the second round we shouldn't be you. That's the problem with the first round. That's my argument. Mm-hmm. When I am the Spurs and I have Victor Wembanyama, why are they putting up that's a seven t- minute clock? That's TV clock? time. That's TV time over everything. <laughs> We need to run our Victor Wimbayama tape. Here's we can his talk about – we can interview I'm, Victor Wimbayama for five minutes on screen. I'm telling you why. I'm not saying it's but the right can, thing. I'm telling you we can feel the time. <laughs> I'm not the person that does it. I'm just telling you. <laughs> we, what happens. Happens. we can it feel that time. It just takes way too long. We can, feel, too we can long. feel that time. It's like, and trust me, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. The professionals who are setting this up, they know way more than me. I'm not, I'm, I don't want their job. I'm not telling them how to do their job. I'm just speaking as a fan who's watched the draft probably the last 23 years. That has happened. The two day, the, the the one day, phenomenal. Yeah, we shouldn't do Taco Bell commercial. I think we, I think that's a quick fix that they can fix. And if you need to fill time, we make those picks early, and we actually have conversations to where we're not asking Matisse Thybul questions about his mom after he get drafted. Mm-hmm, Let's yeah. actually ask some real yeah. questions. What <laughs> about what I mean? the what about the TikTok highlight reels? They need that moment. They need Matisse Thybul talking about his mom so they can do it and cut to the highlights of him hooping for his mom. It's very important for the NBA culture. A lot of fans say that they don't they don't like to hear the sit. Well, no, I think the coverage could be better. We don't need to talk about stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the the interview of the players, I always love it. Yeah. So, I always love so it. So you love it as a fan. Yes. So I'm saying if we know Derek is the third pick, I know. Behind who? Behind Kobe and LeBron. He's the third pick. <laughs> I can respect that. I know that. Because if I if I can't get Kobe and I can't get LeBron, I'm getting Derek. Mm-hmm. I already know that. That's been we've talked. Everybody knows that, right? That's like no secret. So I'm not going to use my eight minute clock, pretending that we don't know I'm getting Derek. I'm gonna mm-hmm. just draft Derek immediately, and y'all can interview Derek as much as y'all need to. And Jay Billis and everybody that want to give yeah. their scout report, that's their job to talk and fill that time. I want Mike Schmidt back. Y- you can't because I know, he's I know he's Portland. working. I know he's working, yeah, but he's I want him back on the cover. Needing time is crazy. I. I with like P said, you have so much time, and for me, who like, I agree with you too about what like the highlights and everything, because it's like I'm not really, obviously, I don't watch college basketball like immensely or anything like that. Like, I enjoy when I see a new player, they do the little interview and they do have the highlights, because like, I kind of get that little like familiarity with mm. him already. But no, having being an actual like that's your job to be scouting these players, and you say I need that extra day. You should have been. You should already had your list probably weeks prior. Yeah, to that, that that extra day ain't doing nothing. It's Y'all really not doing nothing. I'm not a purist at all. I'm here to change everything. If it don't work after three years, we can go back to one day. But it don't hurt to have an extra day. We you, just get do. We got to do a little bit more work. We fine. I mean, we'll get, we'll I'm so it. interested to see the ratings on that second day. For the first year, it's going to be decent. For the second year, it's going to be not as decent. You really For, think the first day is going to be? decent? I don't think yes. the first year will be decent. because the first, the first every, day is always going to be decent. No, it's that first year. Oh, yes, first because year, people I, are going to want to see what the coverage looks like. And people are gonna you're going to be watching. And you're pe- going to be watching. People yeah. are going to. Well, he. It's his job. I've seen him not do his job. Yeah, that is very true. We're about to get to it soon. People are. People are always. Like people like me that I like the traditional. I'm not a traditional person, but I like this tradition of just yeah. doing it one day. They're going to want to criticize it. They're going to want to watch the, it and be able to pick it apart. In season tournament is going to be the perfect example. This first year ratings were ridiculous. Next year, maybe not so much because you know we why? have an idea what it looks like. I'm not going to care that much next year because his team ain't doing nothing. They they went and they put all their energy into winning the in season tournament, and then they as soon as the tournament is over, they, they just, just forget how to play basketball. We got our money though. <laughs> I'm saying we like I got a, I, I got a piece. That's that fandom I was talking about. You are convincing yourself that you got a piece of that five hundred thousand. That is crazy. He that is crazy. Wanted, he just wanted to see Max Christie that get that Rose Royce. Max Christie, he's a guy that could have been drafted day one, could have been drafted day two. So that's two suits, that's two parties, that's two caterings. He'll be fine. He got NBA money after that draft. 
how do we know? <laughs> Second round picks, you you might not stay. Well, you said one or it's rare that we see somebody projected one or two and they go undrafted completely. No, no, so no, no, he's no, gonna no, get no. some. He's money. gonna get drafted, but that's what I'm saying. He only getting some. We know how this money works. He gonna he gonna get drafted, and then boom, it's already half of it going to taxes. Uh, his agent getting a cut. You know what I'm saying? That's why I the represent jock myself. Ta- the jock tax, unless you get, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Just get drafted to Texas. That money, that money get divvied up quick. <laughs> your hat, you know what I mean? Like, that's not Parties spend. don't be that expensive, though. A good party is a couple I've grand. I've seen your wedding. Well, that's, that's, that's not a party. I was, uh, I was at your that's wedding. That's not a party. That's, I was that's at a, your wedding. That's a celebration. Have to bring your own drinks at your own wedding. Don't disrespect my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> we had open bar for the people at home. Everybody that was. That bar was going crazy. Thank too. you. Thank you. It closed early. Shout out to my wife. It, it closed early. That's because y'all had enough. <laughs> oh. We were looking out for you. Uh, no. I took Uber. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's get into the topic of oh, today's man. episode. What happened? Breaking news? Breaking news. I'm listening. If my face scan could work for me to pull it oh, back my, up. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about some 2 k <laughs> face scan or something. No, no. Um. Bill Stiller's game postponed. Wild card game moved to Monday due to winter storm in Buffalo. It's that wow. bad. It's, it's that bad. I, no, they I, knew it was going to be that bad. I was they prepared for them knew. to just play it. Uh, football is usually a sport that plays in any type of condition, especially in Buffalo. Yeah. Them Buffalo fans are ridiculous. I was expecting they. I was expecting them to it's play. Got to be crazy. Yeah. yeah. There we have it. Y'all want to go to the game? Come on. All right, let's do it. Um, we're ben, a couple weeks away from the trade. Benny the butcher might be there. They from Buffalo. The butcher coming. <laughs> We're like three weeks away. We've only had one trade. O'Jan and Obi got traded to the Knicks, and that's been looking really good um, for both Phenomenal. sides, but mostly for the Phenomenal. Knicks. Phenomenal. Today we wanted to build a trade for every name that we know is probably on the move. Today we plan fake GMs, which should be fun. Because I'm a real GM. I'm just waiting on my job. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what type of trades y'all put together. So let's start off with probably the best name that can be moved, even though now there's conflicting rumors about whether or not he might come back. Pascal Siakam. Uh, who who, who want to throw out their first Pascal Siakam trade? I want I Mike it. or Derek to go first I go. on everything. Uh, so for Pascal Siakam. No, you don't sound confident because we have to tell you if this is a good deal or a bad deal. We, I'm playing the opposing GM for well, your trade. Typically trick. throughout history, I typically cook up bad deals. So <laughs> hey, new, At least you know yourself. New year, new you. <laughs> Shit, when they're going to the GM, and probably not. <laughs> uh, so Pascal Siakam, I got him going to the Dallas Mavericks. Okay. Uh, for two first-round picks. Um, a second round pick, uh, and then I'm also throwing Tim Hardaway Jr., Grant Williams, and Josh Green. Mm. Say it one more time for me. Mm. Uh, Josh Green, two first round picks. Um, Protected, no protections, or that's just that's just too deep. Straight up, just oh. straight up. Oh no, I, I have some with. I have, have to some be some protections protection. on those picks. And what years are these picks? Because it's uh, 2025 first round pick, 2026 first round Can't pick. Can't do that. Can't do that. So it has to be a swap. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. What? 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 <laughs> what website did you use? Fanspo. Interesting. Uh, well, that means if, if Fanspo made it go through, it that means somebody that else somebody pick. else owns that pick or somebody else's oh, pick. Oh, probably, yeah. Um, either way, just, just say it one more time. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr., Graham mm-hmm. Williams, Josh Green, um, two first-round picks from Dallas and one second-round pick from Toronto. Can we get Omax? I'm, yeah, I'm saying no. It's just not enough. If I'm Toronto, I'm thinking about building my core mm-hmm. around Scotty. So none of those players – do that for me. Mm. Josh Green, eh, but he plays the same position as RJ, RJ Barrett. And, and, yeah. Unless you really believe that that draft capital, which most some GMs really do, yeah. uh, but based on the trade we just saw from them, they're, they don't really value the picks because uh, they didn't get one back for OJ. They got a second rounder, a, a yeah. good second round pick, but no first round. Late first round, basically. Yeah, late first round, basically. Yeah. Um, I don't hate it, though, because we've seen the rumors that the Dallas Mavericks are interested. They, For me, they don't seem like they have enough, but who, know, who knows? Yeah, yeah. The core of Pascal, Kyrie, and Luka would be disgusting. It yeah. would be. And every trade that I Eric made Lively. for Pascal Siakam is under the assumption that whoever trades to them is going to be able to extend him. Mm-hmm. That's it. Because yeah. no, I don't think anybody's making a Pascal trade for the last two months. They're saying, hey, we're bringing you in, and we're giving you money. And I believe that's one of the reasons why the Sacramento Kings thing fell through, because he might have said, he said he didn't want to I don't know if I'm resigning here. Yes. I would love to know the list of teams that he would resign to. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But we don't know that. We don't know that. Um, I, I, that. I agree with you. If you're not resigning with the Sacramento Kings, Pascal. It's not like the Kings are th- three years ago. Where are you yeah. going? Yeah. It's a nice it's a nice place he to live. He don't want to play those Cali taxes. Weather-wise. The Cali taxes. It. But he, he lives um, in Toronto. Where I just don't know how many suitors he had. Like, when players say that, it, it makes me question them and their representat- representatives. Mm-hmm. 
uh, like how forward are they thinking? Because the market ain't gonna be extensive. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like I said, I don't know if it's gonna be that many options for you, bro. The best thing that can happen to him if he's looking to hit the market is that the 76ers do not make a trade. Yeah, because they're gonna be you one know. of the few teams that are good that has money. I if I was thinking about destinations, Pascal and the Sixers was one. I was like, I, I could actually rock with that. Cameroon Brothers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I could actually rock with that, but it's just like, why would they? Unless they make a trade with somebody else, I'm not trading for Pascal right now. No, no. when I can just get him, it's I'm legit. not giving up anything. Um, I probably would. What would you give up? You you give up the contracts that mean nothing to you. Even though Marcus Morris just got the key to the yeah, city yeah. to Philly, so maybe he's got to stay. <laughs> but it's just the expired contracts that you mm-hmm. got back in the but James they, Harden trade. That's the other part. Toronto has to accept that for sure, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, and that, yeah. Yeah, that part we don't know, because uh, yeah, the Philly pick or Philly thing is about picks. Because I the love players don't matter. I love you, him going to the Mavericks. Yes. But my only pushback is the the Raptors. Yeah. When you when you giving up that lease. If I if I'm a team and I'm seeing that that's all you got to give up, I'm jumping in because I can outdo that. If I'm the Thunder, I could just give you Josh Giddy. That's better than anything you named with the Mavericks. Josh yeah. Giddy and Davis Bertans and, and the picks that we have, the abundance of picks we have. Yep, Josh Giddy, Davis Bertans, and I'll give you something else. We still need about six million, I think. On I don't, that. I don't think. Yeah, I know we're talking hypothetically. OKC, I wanted to pull an OKC trade. I just don't know what their mind is at right now. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, I don't they might as well just keep what they got. I don't mind. That. You want to pull my OKC trade? Yeah. Oh, you have an OKC trade with Pascal? Not with Pascal. Okay, well, wait. Let's. Stay, I, let's stay I got Pascal. a Pascal trade too. Yeah, it's a three. But I feel like that. Keep, please do not. We need to hit an OKC trade. No, we will. Not now. Not now. But yeah, I want to hit a Pascal one. Because Pascal one, so. Um, the three teams are the Warriors, the Jazz, and the Raptors. Whoa, I didn't know it was a three teamer. Mike three did teamer. say he was coming Let's with some go. three Let's teamers. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Warriors get Pascal Siakam, Kelly Olynyk, and they also get Otto Porter Jr. back. They okay. come out as bandits okay. from what I'm hearing. Okay. They space in that flow. They, they the Jazz okay. get Chris Paul, Kaminga, and we could talk about what pick they would get. I'm assuming, I don't even Man, know if they would get it. a pick from there. What? I, I mean, they only gave up so far Kelly Olynyk, right? Yeah. So if yeah. you're getting back Kaminga for Kelly Olynyk, I know they're giving up something. They got to give up something yeah. else, right? Yeah. So the um, I said the Jazz get Chris Paul, Kaminga, and they can get a pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Raptors get Wiggins, Sexton, and Tht. <laughs> Sexton's playing too good to trade him away for basically Kaminga and the pick. That's so, what you're saying. So Wiggins and RJ go back home. They yeah. do. Looking. They do. <laughs> Both under long contracts. Yeah. Canadian Brotherhood play the same position. <laughs> uh, they would never be able to play together. I'm gonna say no to that one. I'm say I no. I enjoy the enthusiasm. Mike. I do, uh, but I, yeah, I think it's if I'm the Jazz, I'm thinking from the Jazz perspective right now. I'm bringing in Kaminga, and you said a pick, but you, you didn't. You get Chris Paul too. Well, well, Chris Paul's out. Get a sixty point, years yeah. old. But, <laughs> yeah. And and if yeah. I'm Chris Paul and I get traded to Jazz, I'm, I'm praying, praying that they're buying me out buy so I can go out, to yeah. your team or something. Um, Back to the Suns. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they might be good again. Um, I think that's I think that's a no from the Jazz. I think the Jazz is like, why am I in this deal? I'm out of here. Yeah. I got I got a Pascal Siakam one. Mm-hmm. Um, Pascal Siakam mm-hmm. takes his talents to Indiana. Hey, okay, I'm listening. We might got the same trade. And the Raptors receive Buddy Hield. Yep. Jairus Walker. Yep. A 2025 first round pick. Okay. And Jalen Smith. I me, same trade. I got a twenty twenty four pick. So it's the same. It's the same okay. trade. Wow. Just, I can okay. rock with picks. that. I can rock with that. I like with Pascal. That. I was trying to get Nimhard in there. Didn't make enough money. Couldn't get it. Yeah. So, so the Pacers fans, because I follow a few, they want Pascal, but they don't want to give up Benedict Mathurin, and they don't want to give up Jairus Walker. You're not getting Pascal without yeah. giving up one of those two players. And Jairus Walker is Jairus Walker is not uh, even they're, like they're a heavily thinking, rotational. Player. Yeah, I know. but they're thinking long term. They'd be yeah, acting I, like that. Be fans acting like they GMs. You have yeah. to give up something. <laughs> you have to. You have you're to not something, getting bro. Pascal Siakam. You attached getting to a, a player, player that even played yet. <laughs> <laughs> them G League stats look good though. They do. All of them do. <laughs> <laughs> but no, All we got do. the exact same trade other than swapping a pick. Um, because you have to give up something. And if I'm the Toronto Raptors, I could bring in Jairus Walker, who yes. has high upside. Mm-hmm. Jalen Smith has been really good this season. Yes, he has. And, and the Raptors feel like a team that would rather, instead of breaking it down, rather retool. And and Jalen, at his value at two years, $5 million annually, can help you retool um, and be at least okay still. And y'all need three-point shooting. Boom. Buddy Hill is one of the greatest or of all time. you could flip him. Some t- teams will call for Buddy Hill. They would. 
Um, expire contracts. Maybe you would want to flip them. Ma- turn it into a three team or where a contender gets Buddy Send because we're not going to be able to resign him. Yeah, because you got to resign him and Gary Trent. Get or you another pick. Yeah, they're not resigning Gary Trent. But no. get, you uh, get another pick. But we got the same trade. Gary Trent might end up a Laker. They're not. Yeah, they're not signing Gary Trent. KB. <laughs> It, Which one is of the sad, worst three point shooting teams Gary in the league? Trent, up a Laker. That's all I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for your reaction. Now to I want to see the OKC trade. Yeah, give us OKC trade. Uh, I must have been really feeling the Jazz because the Jazz is part of this three team trade too. Now that they roll and you just you just want to trade everything. Blow it up. And it's you know who it's gonna be. Larry Marketer. Larry Marketer. It's not Larry. Oh my God. Okay, bro. What's your obsession with THT? <laughs> <laughs> THT not in this deal. Okay, so it has the Trailblazers. Oh. Uh, Jazz and it has OKC in it. That boy, three team fiend. Okay. Bl- uh, Thunder comes up with Jeremy Grant. They get a four, like a Swiss Army four knife man. Uh, I like the fit. I love Jeremy Jazz. Grant. He goes back to OKC. Goes back, yeah. He goes back. Jazz get Josh Giddy, Usman Dang. Mm. And the Blazers get uh, Taylor Hendricks, Davis Bertans, like money filler, and then also S- Simone not Fantasio. Starter. They're not trading Taylor Hendricks. It's a non starter. From what I from what I read, that's not me just saying that because he's shout out to Taylor Hendricks though. But from what I read, he is be, because they are a young team. They're not trading any of their super young talent. I yeah, mean, so what, are they, what are they getting back? They would get Josh Giddy back, so they would get their point guard. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, Keontae George. Yeah, I'll just keep guard. Keontae George. He has been balling. When Keontae George finally shoots over 35, percent it's gonna be crazy. Yeah, I mean, he's he's getting all the looks, and yeah. I don't mean that like in a negative. I'm no, being no, honest. He's, yeah, no. he's getting all the looks. His playmaking is a lot better than I anticipated it to be. Once the shot starts to fall, he's gonna be the starter over there for a long time. I think. Thanks. So, um, again, Mike, a lot of enthusiasm. Yeah. When you I said like jazz Jeremy and OKC, I could have swore there was a lot of marketing. Yeah, I did, I, I, that's another thing. I think when the when the uh, when the Thunder do it, they're going to do it big. Yeah. yeah. No, just no shot at Jeremy Grant. Y'all know that's my boy, but I think they're going to go for it, go for it. Larry Mark like got to be feedback. like the perfect. I perfect, like Jeremy bro. Grant. I think it fit really well next to them too. Yeah, yeah. He can. But, but in order to get Laurie, one of your untouchables got to be involved in that deal. That's the thing. Laurie costs yeah. a lot. So yeah. I don't even. Yeah, I don't. Jeremy Grant goes to the school of Nicholas Batum with that catch and shoot stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. Where he'd never bring don't it down. It. He'll he'll catch it over here and shoot it from here and gotta love that. Him, oh. Clay Thompson, Batum. Those are probably like the top three. <laughs> it's got to be somebody that we forget though, because I've been thinking about this a lot since we went to watch that game. Yeah. Um, and I've been watching a bunch of basketball trying to see. Like, Jeremy Grant doing? comes to the top of my mind. Yeah. I There's got DeJounte so trades. I got two DeJounte I got a, trades. I'm I listening. got a DeJounte trade. Let's get DeJounte. My first DeJounte trade is to the Lakers. Okay. Do you have that? I don't have. I only have one DeJounte trade, and it's not Lakers. Anybody got DeJounte going to the Lakers? I do not have him going to the Lakers. I figured that somebody mm-hmm. would because the rumors. Me, me I think that's going to happen. Yeah. Based on everything I've heard, that tra- he's he might be a Laker. Maybe with the sources. So we're not going to do that one then. No sources. I'm going to do the one that, that I don't <laughs> think going to happen. Okay. DeJounte, I have a source that said DeJounte is guaranteed to be traded. Look at these two in the middle with their sources. I, and I'm, I'm so serious. He's being 100%. Like, that's not even – for the yeah. people at home, that's not a troll. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, oh, you were there. Were you there? No, I wasn't. Okay. But I'm, I, I believe him. Terrence yeah. was there. Terrence was there. <laughs> yep. was there. Um, DeJounte Murray to the Spurs. Back to the Spurs. Back back. For Keldon Johnson, Doug McDermott, 2025 first-round pick. Back to the Hawks. Oh, so it's their pick back. You so y'all could be bad next year. Pick. You got yeah. your pick. You got you had your pick. Um, I'm not mad at it. I, think I do like Dejounte with San Antonio though. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I like it. Um, yeah. I don't know how committed San Antonio is to Keldon Johnson. I know they are Devin Vassell. I, th- I heard they yeah. was on the like he's on the block. Like they're looking for yeah. suitors for him. I like him in OKC a little bit, but um, you do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just don't think Atlanta would trade him back because that would be like, well. We messed up when we traded him. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do that, though. I, is, is this new regime? I, I get what you mean. Did Travis Slank do that deal, or was this – this wasn't Landry Fields' deal, was it? Landry I, Fields was there. Okay. But I, so that makes Travis me think, Schlank, again, that maybe not. He might have been assistant And even Travis if it's Schlank. just like you look at it just like just washing your hands or like it didn't work, mm-hmm. teams don't want to do that because they get embarrassed. For sure. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Nobody yeah, wants sure. to look for like sure. that. Yeah. But then I, I do agree with you, though. I think Literally. he's going to the Lakers. I just had to get that out because I would I like love to see him back to the Spurs. Just the Lakers I, is a is a good fit. Now, if I'm at Atlanta, the Lakers don't really got nothing that I want. I read I read a, a mock trade yesterday, um, and these are not all the moving pieces, but it was part of getting Bogey Bogdanovich and Dejounte Murray to the Lakers. But in this, and I'm talking to you, Mike, as a Lakers fan, the player that you would have to sacrifice is Austin Reeves. Yeah. Okay. I thought that. Oh. Was, that thank oh. you. Thank you. Oh, okay. I, word. Okay. Word. Thank you. Word. At this point. 
uh, I can't <laughs> reach, but the t- everybody but the top two. Okay. Everybody but the I like, top I like that mindset. I love that mindset. I love that. There's I nothing like to mindset. like hold on to or just like. You getting DeJounte and Boga, you better be like, okay. Bogus DeJounte like would be really right nice. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, he's had like his little ups and downs with the Hawks, so you can kind of question what, you know, what's going on over there. But like he's had some games where. Six men in a year, Ken. Mm-hmm. He's literally like when <laughs> Trey Young is meals? struggling a little bit, DeJounte can get to the paint a lot. He can, he he can, can get yeah. two feet in the paint a lot and make the right plays, and he's a really good he finisher. He can defend. That's ah. a, a bigger. He could. He he can defend. He can defend. He, he can defend. He can defend. He can defend. When is yeah. he gonna do it then? With the Lakers. Oh, okay. Anthony Davis behind me. Darvin Ham, my head coach. We're going to defend. Okay. We're going to. This defend. is why I have him one of Miami. Oh. Because I think that talk to us can really bring out that defensive mentality that we saw Ooh. from him in San Antonio. I'm here for it. Um, you get Duncan Robinson, Josh Richardson, um, two first round picks, a second round pick via, via L.A. I don't um, get Jovic. I didn't put you over in the deal. So okay. throw you over in the deal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be. Um, that was advocate. If you the Heat, don't you want to keep Duncan if he playing with Dejounte? And you, wouldn't you rather give just well, the 29 million dollar contract that's aspiring? Kyle Lowry. And Kyle, Kyle Lowry. Lowry. Yeah. You would probably and rather do that, that with picks. But if I'm the Hawks, I would probably rather want Duncan Robinson. We're the 27th ranked defense in the league. I want Jovic. <laughs> I want those picks. I want Jovic. Kyle Lowry can go about his business after the season. Buy him out. Or yeah. buy him out. But I'm I'm really looking for young talent, picks, and cap flexibility. I love Dejounte in Miami though. Yeah, and Me I also too. gave them Patty Mills. I don't like they space oh, him. Oh, Patty God. Mills is a Patty Mills is like spot. I like they space yeah. it, but I like Dejounte there. Yeah, and then Patty Mills gets to go back to a contender. Yeah, go play some good basketball, yeah. Patty. We kind of forgot about you, brother. I kinda. I ain't heard that name all year long. And then for guess real? what you're gonna hear when he in Miami? Patty Mills. <laughs> Patty Mills. <laughs> he gonna have some big games out there. I promise you. Especially Patty. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's my trade. Um, the Knicks. Oh, they nah. say, hey, nah. we're not getting Donovan Mitchell. No, nah. no. Nah. So let's get a player on the le- lower tier. He's nah. not a, as small of a guard as Donovan Mitchell, so we don't have to worry about that. Talking about that light skin brother? No. Nah. Dejounte Murray going nah. to the Knicks. <laughs> oh, I thought for sure. I'm so, we sounded like he was he setting up with Zach Levine. I thought he oh, was yeah. too. Yeah. I thought he was too. <laughs> Evan Fournier's expiring contract. Mm-hmm. Quentin Grimes money before you have to tr- you have to pay him mm-hmm. before you pay him mm-hmm. the Dallas first round from this year which is a l- not a lottery pick yep. and the Milwaukee first round pick for Tw- next year twenty times mm-hmm. yeah talk those, to me I mean those picks are enticing that Milwaukee pick is going to suck it's going to be like twenty eight to twenty nine it's going to mm-hmm. be very at the bottom but I love those picks by the way I think yeah. the Knicks thrive with those picks you you have said Emmanuel that in the past. quickly is not have. a is not a lottery pick yeah. Mitchell Robinson is not a lottery pick. Quentin Grimes is not a lot of people. Well, now, and they got extra time to scout now that we got two days. <laughs> <laughs> so they shouldn't miss the picks. Um, <laughs> well, no, I, I, Knicks I fan, talk I, to I, I kind of like it. It's, I like not, it. it's not a terrible trade. The problem what you is like about it, it kind of shuts you off from doing the big deal. Yes. Yeah. But, like, the Knicks can't just be waiting for the big deal because it may never materialize. And you gave up your most tradable assets. The money player wise, unless like, you're like right. player wise, Dejounte, yeah. you could play for us for a season, but now Donovan Mitchell available, yeah. we gonna trade you for Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, because like if I'm another, but we team, gave up some of the assets as far as draft capital. Yep. If I'm a team with a top 15 player and I'm going to that direction of like a rebuild or whatever, you already trade away RJ and quickly. Mm. I, I may want to entertain other deals. Entertain them. Yeah. Entertain them. <laughs> Definitely entertain them. But you know what's going to happen? Like who you're you're hype. Hi- you're hypothetically talking about Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. When he's at the end of the thing, he's going to be Pascal. They're going to need yeah. a commitment. Yep. So, and no team is going to give you what you want when he's on the last couple of years of his deal, uncertainty if he's going to resign. And everybody around the league says that this dude is determined to play in New York at some point. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen in the offseason. Yeah. So that's why I think the Knicks don't make a big trade right now. I agree. Yeah. My, you know, my next trade, trade, yeah. trade is Evan Fournier, the Dallas pick. To Malcolm Portland Brogdon. and give us Malcolm Brown. I that, like that, that too. works. Yeah, I, I mentioned this on on the Kenny Beach and Pod <clears throat> plug. Um, I hate that podcast. Uh, yeah, it's it's not as good as this one. Uh, Something about their host that I <laughs> <laughs> that if the Knicks pull off that trade to get Brogdon, it's it goes Boston, Milwaukee, New York. You got him over Philly. Yes, with what Malcolm Brogdon on that roster. Yes. Healthy Malcolm Brogdon with that yes. team is incredible, brother. And that's assuming oh, that the no. Philly don't make another trade. I, yeah. The Philly. The, <laughs> the Philly. Bro, we, you talk about Jalen Brunson. Julius Randle's playing an all-NBA level again. Mm-hmm. And then we, we get, bring in Malcolm Brogdon as a secondary ball handler, and too. 
hypothetically Mitchell Robinson come back because we didn't get the, didn't get the uh, disabled exception. player exception. I mean, that team in the seven-game series, if those two teams matched up, I'm taking New York. I'm taking New York. So and I won't even think twice about it. Our starting lineup then becomes Jalen Brunson, mm -hmm. Malcolm Brogdon, mm -hmm. OG Ananobi, I'm Julius okay. Randall, I think I heart. You Malcolm Brogdon off the bench been working for two years now. Six man of the year. Yeah. Dante DiVincenzo <laughs> continues to start. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. feeling like I was back when we picked Embiid over the Celtics when they was in the bubble. Because it's like he been hooping way too damn good. And then Tyrese Maxey is like he's here. He's legit. And they've been playing even without Joel Embiid. They've been they, uh, they picked up a good one. They did pick up a good one. They picked win. up a win, but before that they, they were the yeah, 29th ranked offense. Like it was awful. Yeah. But I think it's fair to say to Joel Embiid, I want to see you do it in the playoffs before I give you the benefit of the doubt. And that's where I am as an NBA fan. I yeah. agree. No, to I, play the I, devil's I, that's, advocate, somebody's going to say Julius Randle, and we want to see that too. I, yes, for 100%. sure. But, but Julius Randle don't have to be one. He yes. doesn't. That's that's yeah. the best part about yeah. it. Yeah. Our best player is Jalen Bruss. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Julius no Randle, slight. he, no he be coming to hoop, though. Julius Randle. Julius Randle be coming to hoop. Julius Randle be hooping out of his mind. He do. Out of his mind. Somebody asked me who's play, who are really good players that you don't like watching. Julius Randle's on that list. For real? And I, and I was trying to figure, because it's a mode of him, though. Oh, Because also on that list, um, I had Pascal Siakam. Yeah, yeah. These are good players. They're really good players. And I would take them on my team 100% of the time. Who's, a, who's better, that Desmond Bain or Pascal Siakam? Pascal Siakam's better right now. So right now, a better Desmond preference. Bain. A better preference is if your fate, not even your, if you have a team, yeah, and you can get one of those two. I would actually rather have Desmond. Bain. I would rather have Desmond. Bain. I would, oh, yeah. then, I, okay, I let me Desmond not say Bain. that. Then <laughs> let me not say that because then I I kind of make it Desmond Bain. Why do y'all say that? Because he's younger. He not not even because he's think younger. He just, I think that his skill set transitions well. Yeah, I think for the next twenty everywhere. years. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so who do you think is better? I don't want any Raptor I think as fans. Of right now, Pascal Siakam is a better player. I don't want player. Raptor fans that think I'm trying to preface But if you put them not. on the table and say one of them is on your team, I'm mm -hmm. taking Desmond Bain. Yeah, I'm taking Desmond Bain every day. Mike I would too. Bain. No, Desmond Bain was my first pick, uh, honestly. If, um, imagine if his wingspan was two inches. Man. He might have messed up his shooter. Yeah, he might not be the shooter. Given ah, Desmond, be, <laughs> given Desmond he Bain. He can afford to you give up your wingspan, shooter. you get better shooting. True. So I think that translates to real given life. Desmond <laughs> Bain wingspan is like giving Kyrie Irving height. It just makes the game No, Kyrie, I don't want Kyrie at all. I want him to be six. That's why I, Desmond Bain, it's cool that he be mixing Who's better, people Mikhail up. Bridges or Desmond Bain? Desmond Bain. I think there's a Desmond Bain, but I think Mikael Bridges obviously got the defense and like there's value in him being able to do that. No disrespect but I'm to any of these players. Bain. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. I would take Desmond. Mikael Bridges or Pascal Siakam. That's so tough, Siakam. bro. Siakam. That's tough, KB. I'm still thinking about the floors of first. Desmond Bain and Mikael Bridges. Bridges. We know we know you Mikael is your homie or whatever. So, say it, show us Desmond. I saw him at Summer League once. <laughs> but did, did he say he gonna come on the show? No, Desmond, come on the show. Did Mikael say he'll come on the show? Uh, I feel I'm like gonna say said before because he might come on the show. Derek White or Desmond Bay? That was his best. Hey, it, it was, let everybody say it. Desmond, you need to Derek chase White. down block. I'm I thought the Derek Angela White. Russ was gonna be Derek White. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Miller. <laughs> Let's get the Zach Levine right out of the way. I got a big one, man. Okay. I, I look, I've been looking at your screen like out the corner of my eye. Like 20,000 I'll, I'll people. I'll keep it for late. I'll keep it for the okay. last one. The Zach Levine market is nearly non-existent, by the way. Yeah. When you compare it to having DeJounte on the market, Pascal on the market, why would I go get four years, guarantee 40-plus million dollars? And, again, Zach is a very, very good basketball player. And I think at this point he's underrated because people are just looking at the contract and just looking at the fact that he's been on Chicago and he's been in Minnesota, so he's only played five playoff games in his career. He's really good at basketball. Yeah, he is. He and I'm also really trying to convince people. That contract, when I, when I see really that contract. He's been good at post-injury yeah. as far as fitting somewhere. When I see that contract, the first thing that comes to mind is like, do I want to play probably my third best player this amount of money? Yep. Yeah. If it wins your championship, yeah. I mean, that's end all be all. The ne I think somebody has to commit to that because that's the best version that I think we might get of him. Mm -hmm. Because paying him as your number one, <laughs> that you ain't going nowhere. Right. So as if if you can get him as your number third, as your number three, I think you have to swallow that bullet, and I think you have to look at the player. We've never seen him be a number three. He ain't a number one. We haven't really seen him as a number two because him and Demar can go back and forth for any given night. Him as your number three. You know, I, I disagree. I think that that. 
the first year of DeMar, he was the number two. And he made the All-Star game as number two. Who? Like We're talking about the supernova DeMar DeRozan first year in Chicago. Yeah, you think DeRozan Zach was, was number two? two. Oh, no, yeah. Year. Yeah. But I, don't, uh, but I think in that sense, they still had this thing where it's like, when I think about the number ones and number twos, I think it's like no question. So it's like, I'm always, for the most part, the guy. Mm-hmm. I think with them, they was a little closer. But I, I guess any any tandem. Not any when trio. it was 60 seconds left. DeMar was like, get out of my way. It's <laughs> that, yeah. it's me hey, time. you got me there. You got me yeah. there, for sure. A wise man once said, if there's any doubt, then it's no doubt. A wise man once said that. If there's any doubt, there's no doubt. I know. I get what he's saying. <laughs> it's Such just a, old it's, head, it's a mic. Old it's head, a micism. Old head ass quote. It's a micism <laughs> where he just randomly says a quote. My my do dad you, once do, told me. Do you get, do you get snapples by the case and you just open the top <laughs> and keep the do top? Oh, you, does, does your dad say these quotes to you? No, I just hear him and I just I, you know I, I watch a lot of shows. With his dad no more. <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. <laughs> I thought to him not too long ago. <laughs> that's uh, okay. that sounds that you, sound like he ain't talked to him in a while. <laughs> you can't talk about business Auntie on Section Eight. Uh, you put out business. You put like, out a whole <laughs> album talking about my Auntie on Section Eight. <laughs> uh, so, so don't man, talk. What, what trade we on, man? <laughs> Zach um, Levine. Zach yeah, yeah. So what's your I Zach got a Zach Levine trade. trade. Oh, okay, go nah, ahead. I need to hear this one. Uh, Zach Levine goes to um, Sacramento. Harrison Barnes. Kevin Herter, two first round picks. Kevin, this is nice one because I Kevin, had the same. I literally Kevin had the Herter's same. Kevin Herter's been linked, so I like that. I like that. I also like that uh, for the Kings though too, because Malik Monk, he's on the last year of his deal. He's probably gonna need some money too, and it's just like. If I'm I Malik, think they'll if, find a way. If, to if I'm Malik Monk, I'm Malik they, they should find a way, and I should find a way because if it ain't, I want to stay where my game yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. If the Bulls get two first round picks for Zach Levine. I'm I don't. I'm Carney Shovis jersey it's on the show. It's, it's not. It happen. don't happen. That's I, I like it because the Kevin Herter we've yeah. heard, and he's. They'll probably at least together. get one. They're and gonna get one. Also, when I was That's looking it. at this trade, Harrison Barr just looks like he's gonna be in a Bulls jersey one day. <laughs> he just do. Why do I feel like you've said that before? He does. Because I, I also feel like, feel like the Bulls may also try to trade him. Because he's like a Patrick Williams. They just be no no accessories. Draft the top five. Forties number. No, doesn't be. I mean, seventh. He was seventh. There you go. Come on, man. Out of what college? UNC. What's his nickname? Barney, the Black Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> I have to know where that came from. If we ever get to speak to here, some. Um, I like it. I just don't think we get two. If, if we get two first round picks again, that would be. I will crazy. guarantee it. You um, won't get two unless unless Let's make a million dollar. Unless bet. Drummond is in the deal. Let's make a million dollar bet. I know you got it. <laughs> 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 I put on the fit, and he say, "I know you got it." No, I just know. I know your. I know, I know your contract terms. So <laughs> <I know. laughs> Let's do it. Okay, a million dollars. The Harrison Barnes. What, what I you mean, want to put ten dollars on it? What yeah. we doing we on this do side? Team. All right, cool. Um, y'all doing? Y'all doing how much? Ten dollars. We ain't got oh. millions to throw around. True. Uh, I don't have millions, but I know he has them, and I know this is not happening. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Right. Um, I. This has been linked, obviously. For Sacramento Kings, it will be completely, completely buying into the now, <laughs> which is fine. Um, no, it's been buying into now and the future. That's a, that contract got some length on it. Yeah. Yeah, but it's four years. I don't love it for Sacramento, but I would take it. A thousand times over for the Bulls. Yeah. A thousand times over. I like Kevin Herter. Six seven. He's having a horrific year, year this season. When you say you like somebody, the first thing you mention is they height. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I like him six nine, two fifty five. He's red velvet in the red jersey. <laughs> Come on, man. They gotta bring back hot sauce. No. Oh, don't yes. you? No. 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 Yeah. They gotta bring Stacey back hot King. sauce. Stacy King is gonna call him hot sauce. I swear. I, Give me some hot sauce, especially with the red hair. Oh yeah, it's, it's coming, KB. He says hot sauce every game, but hot sauce as a nickname is Kyle Corver exclusive. That is that would be disrespectful to one of the legendary shooters. Kyle Corver would embrace. You just call Kobe like one of the best shooters in Bulls. <laughs> I think he is. <laughs> I didn't say Kyle Kyle Corver is the best. I said one of the most legendary shooters, not in Bulls history, just you. in NBA history. You were you? Did you watch the Bulls when they had Kendall Gill? No, that was a little bit before okay. my time. Okay. I mean, yes, but no at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, for sure. Shout out to Kendall Gill. Kendall Gill. The only other place for Zach Levine to potentially go is Philly. Mm-hmm. Not, with my, not with my trade. Okay, let me, I, let me do Philly. It's the expirance of Covington, Batum, Morris, and then the 2026 uh, Clippers pick. 
That's uh, it. Those sounds like Bulls players. I would love to watch Nicholas Batum in Chicago. Covington Batum. <laughs> would you, for say 20 you, games. Cause that's, that's, say you, you only know. get one pick with the one from Sacramento. Would you still rather do that Hell one? Hell yeah. Because yeah. those yeah. are players I, that yeah. I believe. The players play you get right from now. Philly, you, you might as well buy out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those They're literally going to leave in off season. <laughs> yeah. Those players complement what you would have left behind, too. DeRozan, Vooch, and Kobe White. Just some shooters. Yep. Rangy yeah. shooters. You ready for I this? feel bad for Batum, though, because wow. he said he's probably retiring after this year. and then uh, He just has, he said he was about to retire when he got traded. That's another reason to trade him. You'll be good. You're retiring anyway. <laughs> you just get one more chance to swing for the fences, though. Uh, we can just buy him out. Yeah. And then he can just go right back. It's, it's to up Clippers. to you now. Where, where you? <laughs> go back to the Clippers. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, listen to this. Mm-hmm. You got your seatbelt on, Mike? I do. Zip your coat up. Let's get it. Okay. The Chicago Bulls. Yes, I accept. Get a mentor for Kobe White. Oh, man. Chris Paul. Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw that coming. You know he used to play on Chris Paul A. Yes, that's as his mentor. They get Andrew Wiggins, oh Jonathan Kaminga, and Moses Moody. <laughs> so we get the oh. whole roster under the staff. The Warriors get Zach Levine, Alex Caruso, Ayo DeSumo, and Ooh. Torrey Craig. Four for four. No wins. No, no picks in this? Nope. No picks. Just all players. because the Warriors are committing to the four years mm-hmm. of Zach, the Bulls are committing to the four years of Wiggins. Okay, that the makes Warriors sense. get Caruso, the Bulls get Kaminga, and then the rest is the filler, and we make a money match. Okay, I like that. Eight players. I kind of, mm-hmm. I really love that deal for the Warriors. Well, walk me through the the bull, what the Bulls receive again. They receive Chris Paul. Okay. They receive Andrew Wiggins. Okay. Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody. Got a little bit of everything. Get some youth. Get a veteran wing, veteran PG. Wiggins for the last 18th months has been one of the worst players in basketball. <laughs> and I don't think you come to Chicago. I don't. I do not think you come to Chicago and get better. On the Warriors, though, <laughs> Warriors, though. we've seen uh, we've seen players go other places and turn that game. Well, around. KB, you always know. You so you telling me if I compare Andrew Wiggins' numbers to Patrick Williams? There's going to be a big discrepancy. Uh oh, they're the same player, <laughs> but one of them one of them has been paid twenty eight million dollars this year, and the other one wants twenty eight million dollars next year. <laughs> I just so um, that allows you to comfortably walk away from Patrick Williams, which we don't want to do for a twenty nine year old Andrew Wiggins. You know what's crazy though, KB? That first month that the people get paid, they go crazy. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> for that go, first month though. <laughs> So I you love, go, you I don't love see that value of that 29 mil for that first first month. So first Andrew month. Wiggins has been the worst player in basketball, but he averaged more points, rebounds. Go, go, <laughs> go, go, go per 36 because um, no, Patrick, no. Patrick, Patrick aver- Williams don't play as many minutes as Wiggins. Why? Because he's not very good. <laughs> 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 he answered his own question. I didn't say they were good. I just say they've been similar. <laughs> they both have not been great. What's the Patrick Williams three-point shooting at? 38% again? 40.8. Oh, and he started off horrendously. So the last two months, he's been shooting a 50% clip. Yeah. I don't like it. Uh, five points against Houston. He, he, he came off the bench again. He's been coming off the bench since Zach Levine's been back. Five points against the Knicks. Two yep. of eight shooting. Yep. Uh, Three points against Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. I'm just reading the last five games mm-hmm. on basketball reference. <laughs> well, Zach Levine's been back for four or three. So we went back to a bench roll. Last five games for Wiggins, 17 points against Chicago. That don't count as against Chicago. <laughs> uh, five points against the Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he had some of them in there. Uh, three points against Detroit. Yeah, I, Detroit? Detroit. Detroit. No. Three I point, know he blew somebody part of Three points against Toronto. Oh, my God. At had, home? He, he had, he, no, it was in Golden State. Oh, okay. he, he had 11 against the, the, uh, Denver. Okay, okay. 50% Them sure. numbers look so he similar. He said 11. <laughs> Who got a ring? You right? Who's all star? Who's all star starter? <laughs> that don't never leave the. Who's the first overall? Pick? That has to be the. M- <laughs> That's crazy. The drop off after being an all star starter for him is actually kind of crazy. Yeah, it's it's it gonna is, be man. studied. What happened to Wiggins? Somebody's yeah. gonna make that YouTube video in two years. What happened to Wiggins? Yeah. Um, you remember that the moment Steve Kerr grabbed Alice Caruso and said, mm-hmm. "I would love to have you." Yes, he did. I would love to have you. I that's what I was saying. Caruso we're we're like, we, too. we're like, we don't know that he said that, but it looked like. Hey, that's it. what it looked Caruso like. Caruso going over there and he playing forty minutes because it's gonna be hard to take that take uh, take him off the court. It would be. He gonna defend well. He gonna make plays for but the guard. Get, the who guard. higher in the standings, the Bulls or the Warriors? Who's higher in the standings right now? The, the Bulls. Bulls. The Bulls. Might as well stay. I got a random trade. Mm-hmm. We had another play on that list. This is gonna be just let just let hear me out. Mm-hmm. 
The Hornets receive. Oh, I love it already. Markel Fultz, mm -hmm. Jed Howard, and a 2025 first round pick via Denver for Terry Rozier. What? My pick for t my trade for Terry Rozier is going to the Orlando Magic <laughs> for Jed Howard, a Denver 2025 first round pick. And I put Gary Harris instead of oh, okay. Markel Fultz. Well, I, mean, you, I would think. Why I, you do Gary Harris? I don't know. Terry I think Markel would make Markel, more sense. Markel, well, I, I figured that there might be more deals to be done. Okay. Yeah, I, um, but I no, like that makes that. more sense to get rid of Markel. Yeah, I, like yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that one for the Markel. Yeah. You could just go into free agency. Terry Rozier's been really good this year. He the team has been bad, but he's been really. good. I would love to see a Magic team be aggressive like that. What made you pick him going to the Magic? Because they need scoring. Me too. Their offense is bad. Their def they can hold Terry Rozier defensively because Jalen Suggs yeah. is good. When Franz Wagner's back, he's good. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff. They need more offensive punch. They need that offense. He creates shots for himself and for others. And I think he can coexist playing next to Paolo Franz when they still get. He doesn't interrupt what they got. I like this a lot. You mm -hmm. have him for three years. Mm -hmm. Orlando historically is not a team that's going to go into the free agency market and make big slashes. Splashes. This is how you get somebody to be able to bring in a 20-point score in exchange for – a rookie that's not playing, and mm -hmm. he's not your highlighted rookie from this year. You still keep Anthony Black. And also Markel, who hasn't played many games this year. And Cole Anthony's been back. really – Cole Anthony's been coming off the bench, yeah. and he's been a punch for him. Mm -hmm. like yeah, Markel being out, Cole Anthony really stepped up, and like he solidified himself as like the back. And back. then when you're the Hornets, you get another pick, mm -hmm. and you get a, a young guy. You they, They're desperate for young talent that can coexist with LaMelo. Jed Howe was a jumbo three-point shooter from what we know. We haven't seen him much in the NBA level. You know, I, I like him, it. You can put him in a rotation immediately. Immediately. Yeah. I also tried to do a Orlando Magic Zach Levine deal, but I think that's just too big of a contract for them it's right way now. Too yeah, big. and it's so long, yeah. too yeah. long for them to commit to. Yeah, Terry Rozier's contract a lot better, and the difference between Zach Levine and Terry Rozier, if you're like a, a, a general manager, you probably just take Terry Rozier. Yeah, facts. What is that? Twenty seven million difference? Twenty three uh, million for Terry like Rozier? Seventeen million? Is it? He's at twenty three. Forty. Seven. Seventeen. 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 Um, any other deals? Uh, I think I cooked up a maybe one or two more. What was he cooking? I also oh, have also had Brogdon going to Philly uh, for the two expiring deals of Covington and Marcus Morris. Um, I'm trying to get Covington back in, in Portland. I see you, boy. A second-round pick and then two firsts. Two firsts? I also – this is crazy. I also have Malcolm Brogdon. Uh -oh. Oh, I know. also have Malcolm Brogdon ending up in Philly in case they don't want to do a Zach Levine deal, yeah. which, again, understandable. It was Mook finally – Four con cork miles gets get the out. Trade. He ah! finally gets out. What, it's been three years. It's been a long time. Two different man. coaches and everything. And then the 2026 first rounder. No, come to New York. <laughs> <laughs> like he gets early. Come to New York, man. I don't know. I don't even remember this one, but it, I just took a photo of it. It was uh, DeAndre Hunter, Bogdan, Bogdan Bogdanovich, and Patty Mills for Clay Thompson and Moses Moody. So the the Hawks get Clay Thompson and Moses. Y'all think it's realistic that the Warriors trade Clay? No, if he leaves, it's going to be via free agency this year because it's just such a tough year this uh, yeah. this season. He'll go into the off season and he'll have to. Go. I think the Warriors are going to commit to this to the big three for like this last rest of the season. But other than that, no, I don't. If they, I'm said everyone is available. I'm not Curry. I'm, I'm not convinced to that, but I'm not. I'm not, I also don't think that they would trade in any of the three. Yeah. 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 I. Yeah, I've been, I'm in the same boat because it's just like you they've been together for so long and that's been like their core. But it's a lot of like hands that are pointing to this is not the right direction. That's why I'm like, maybe it is time to actually open up and explore those trades. You know, Draymond shouldn't be safe either for anybody that he shouldn't him. be safe. Send him to Detroit. He be safe. Should not be safe. They shouldn't be safe. Send him to Detroit. What is the market for Clay Thompson though? There, I, I just don't really think there is one. That's yeah. another reason why. We're yeah, talking. I just think they're in a weird situation where they want to make trades. But at this point now. Their players really aren't that valuable. But at Wiggins the same value, time, Wiggins has played his value down. Wiggins has had zero the, value. They just had the conversation about Pascal, and they were reluctant to include Kuminga. Which is crazy. That's what confuses well, me. Yeah, why would you not expect the Raptors to want Kuminga if I'm giving you Pascal Siakam? Give me the young, promising player in mm -hmm. Kuminga. I'm giving you a win-now player in Pascal. I think this is a win-win for both parties. What do you even do in that situation? Like, okay, you keep Kuminga. You still have Draymond and Pascal? Is that their goal? And then Kaminga's literally going to get lost to the show. He's, he's not going to play. He's that. already coming off the bench again. Yeah, man, if we can get him without giving him up, we can make another move. I mean, yeah, I guess that's a I possibility. Guess, but that's I agree fool's with you. Goal. That's fool's I, goal. I, I just agree with. I I agree with you wholeheartedly. That it confused me. You don't have a lot of movement. There's not a lot of value there. The one thing that does have some value could get you that guy, and you're saying no. 
then what are y'all gonna do? And then you get Steve, uh, Stephen Curry up there saying, to continue to do the same thing and getting the one same different result. results, it's insanity. Yeah. Hey, that's the first time we've ever seen Steph Curry like, he didn't ask for moves to be made. But but that is the first time we've ever seen yeah. him do something he like that. He did it in like a LeBron way. Yes. And that, that's all. I, a month ago, I put out a video. That was all I was asking. When Draymond Green punched Yusuf Nurkic, I'm like, Steph, you too good at basketball to accept these conditions. Yeah. You have to be aggressive. Because they're not going to trade you. Giannis got aggressive. You need to get aggressive. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if granted for him, this is like the first time he's been in a situation. Like for, throughout his most career, it's been – Roses and part, I mean, yeah, last gold year was and so jewelry great. and all that. But yeah, like besides been, the first stint, yeah, yeah, this is like the first stint of like true adversity and like them really like sucking at this point. So like, mm. for except for they, you remember they won what? 15 games a couple years ago. He wasn't true. playing. He, he played he five. Steph Steph Curry was he played five. Yeah. <laughs> if, I, imagine him not playing, but he's up there complaining about them being bad. Be proactive <laughs> instead of reactive. Yeah, but those, you those, Eric, draft, Eric those draft picks haven't really done anything for them. No, you're right. <laughs> they won a championship. Moody, Kaminga, Jordan Poole, Wiseman. Didn't really do much on that run. Yeah. Two timelines didn't work out. It's okay. It's hard to develop talent while also trying to compete for a championship. It's rare. I went through a whole case study um, trying to figure out teams that did the two timelines successfully. It's not many of them. Would y'all say that now we're – could this also just be a sign that we're seeing a transition into the new generation? Like LeBron, Steph. 100%. You're looking I think at about them being the at the time. bottom of the conference now, whereas now you're seeing the young up and coming teams at the top. You got Luka, mm-hmm. Anthony Edwards, Shea, Auto, Jokic. All those I think the playoffs will prove that to us because I think we're still looking and latching on for those names that you mentioned to be in the mix. Yeah. We still want Steph Curry to be up top. We still want LeBron James. We still want to see Kevin Durant. We still want to see Kawhi in the playoffs. And so if these guys like the Lakers and the Warriors are taking a step back, the Suns, if they're not going to participate in the higher echelon of playoff basketball this year, then we need those new guys to be in that spot and then to deliver some incredible basketball moments. You know, imagine yeah. if we get a Western Conference Finals of the Thunder and Timberwolves, Shavers, and we need them to deliver that so mm-hmm. that we can we can want more of that. But yeah. I think without having any of those guys have those moments yet, um, we still yearn for those type of rivalries that we've seen before. But if you have that or, you know, Tatum and the Celtics the, are young. The, ta- yeah. the, um, the game that was a couple of days ago with um, the, the Celtics, Celtics and Wolves. Timberwolves, yeah. that felt like a playoff game. They yeah, were no, a finals game. Yeah, they've given us two yes. great basketball games. Both games went over yeah. time. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we need we need the, the youthful guys to come in and start creating some rivalries and some back and forth. And I think as long and once we have that and they deliver, you'll start to see the, 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 the tides kind of change. But until then – because we're used to it and, and they've delivered, we're always going to want Steph and LeBron. Or the, the Warriors and Lakers match up in the playoffs or, you know, Kevin Durant versus the Warriors in the playoffs. But I think uh, – or Giannis, you know. Um, I was also thinking about OKC, man. It it just feels like yesterday that, like, every year felt like Shea, they sh- they shutting down Shea for the last couple of months because they just want to try to get their pick. That ain't no problem no more. Like, mm-hmm. Shea is here. He's a – MVP candidate, all NBA, like 30 points a game easily. They just lost easily. by 73 like two years ago. Yeah. Remember that game? Yeah. That was by 73 points. That's the one where I, uh, our boy, I think Three Cone was like, if they want to ever question my fandom, I watch this yes, whole game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he was just at the game when they won by 62. Oh, that's yeah. a good I was, turnaround. I was texting him, and he was like, I just and need them to get the lead to 73. About I need them to get the lead to 73. And when like, we were talking yeah. about, like, sometimes the best part about being a fan is when you kind of ride. <laughs> you ride those lows because when it's high, you feel it. Like it, it's actually like you feel the difference. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it goes back to uh, what Austin Rivers was talking about a few months ago about it needing the next new face. Mm-hmm. Well, we still could waiting this be a for a playoff the, series to solidify that. We, yeah, we still waiting for Curry. We still waiting for Brian. Like you turn on TV, these are the teams they talking about, not the younger teams. Yeah. Because the younger teams don't have that face just yet. Um, Which is kind of crazy because, like. Those younger teams are so much more funner and more entertaining 100%. to watch. Like I would much rather watch Shea versus Anthony Edwards right now than a series of LeBron versus Steph. Right now, like, yeah, right now, right now. But if, if we started the season, you would have wanted. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Because that playing game could happen. That Warrior, playing game, Warriors, yes. Lakers. We've had Again, that we've had it already. We, we That's have, when LeBron shot the, the ball through three rims. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be at. I saw three and I shot it in the middle one. <laughs> just be talking. <laughs> yeah, I could just be talking. That kind of ruined it. He should have just kept the player like, yeah, I knew what I was doing. 
That made you just think you got lucky. I just threw it up and it just went in. Just so happened to go in. <laughs> yeah, didn't the Warriors lose two playing games that year too? They so did. They, they went in like an eighth seed and lost and missed it completely. They lost yep. it up. And then Steph Curry said, "We'll be back next year." Who what did they lose to in the second one? Was I think it, they lost uh, to the Grizzlies, right? Then the Grizzlies make the playoffs, or I think so. They went against the Warriors. Was, was the, it the Pelicans' year? Or the Nuggets? Were the Warriors? I'm gonna look it up. Were the Warriors a team that that just had one game and you out? I no, I thought it was it was the uh, Lakers and Warriors were like the seven and eight. Oh, okay. I, if I remember correctly, it was something like that. Yeah, they lost to the Grizzlies because yeah, the Grizzlies yeah. lost to the Jazz in the first round. Oh, the ja- yep. yeah, yeah, it was, it was. I was trying to remember who was at the top of the conference. Didn't jo- oh no, Donovan Mitchell missed game one. Yes, and then Donovan Mitchell came back. And yes, then and they the, won four. Yeah, in a row. they won four in a row. Yep, yep. Yeah, good memory. What's up, man? <laughs> what are you watching? Sometime I try to just just sometime. All right, I I think there's been a lot of questions in our community about the transition. Yeah. Um, and I think we owe it to them to kind of talk about at least a little bit. Yeah. Because uh, the last six years that they've been watching. Let's talk about a lot. Have been, uh, yeah, it's been under one co- uh, uh, company. And of course, we switched to the Omaha family, um, ESPN family. And yeah, like I said earlier, we made a decision back in October. And we just had to sit on our hands. You know, doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes, meetings and conversations about exactly what it would look like. And a new studio spot obviously this is not the one that y'all know for the last six years or so um but we've all been pretty hush hush about everything really yes. um out of respect for our previous company and out of respect of what we were building but here we are so i, I don't even know where y'all want to start but like let, let's talk about it man we here ah oh, man it's it's yeah how you feel I, I, like and the reason i'm asking you specifically is because i think a lot of times we always are in the party and oh, you are yeah. too but the other part that people forget is you also now have had fatherhood. So simultaneously, you're entering fatherhood while we dealing with all of this. Is so it was a lot. You much? was joining some meetings, and we can hear it that you had just woke up. Yeah. The baby, <laughs> the baby, I, you know, baby left, had you up all night, and it sounds like you just woke up for some of those meetings. It's like, oh yeah, D-Mills had a long night. So how, yeah, how, how, how are you feeling? How has everything been for you? I'm feeling good. I'm actually, this is like the most excited I've felt in a long time. Um, maybe just because it's new, I don't know. But I feel like the next chapter just seems like it's so much potential, so much room to grow. Um, and I just feel like there's a lot of opportunities here. And that's that's pretty much my big thing. Um, you could just even tell from the set. Like, we would never go into a situation where we're not leveling up. Mm-hmm. And I think as a collective group, we both analyzed everything. We looked at benefits of both sides. And we looked at what could potentially be the room that we could grow the most. And we felt like this was the transition that could help us grow as a group the most. No, that's, yeah, that's pretty that's much. I mean, too. everything we've done and kind of like y'all seen has been for just that. It's to get bigger and to level up and to be more professional. It's like we want to take those steps, not just, you know, once a year. We want to do this continuously. You want to continue to elevate for as long as we go. And this is uh, I don't know. I, it, it's a very exciting thing. You know, and I, I, I think people don't understand the magnitude sometimes, even even ourselves. But, you know, I'm looking at the, the return and the feedback and, you know, to be able to see, um, obviously, much love and appreciation to Omaha and ESPN. But even to be able to see something like Enjoy up there and, yeah. and we, us to, you know, have that branded and, and collective. And obviously that's KB and, and uh, you know, um, the Hawk brothers. The Hawk boys. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, you know, we, we feel a certain um, responsibility to represent that as well. It's all family. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's all one family. You know, Derek and Mike uh, are our family. Yeah, obviously, everybody know me and KB are blood cousins, first cousins or whatever. But I think with all of these years going by, Derek and D. Mills are a part of our family. And I look at the Enjoy brand, even though it's not my own, I look at it like it's my own because it's all one family. So to be able to have that and to be able to go back into having numbers on the board be ours yeah. um, is an important thing. And I know a lot of people don't understand it because they're not us in these seats. But, um, you know, it, 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 it is frustrating and hard when you look at something like the past where um, a lot of that was us. And a lot of us, we put blood, sweat, and tears into. And, you know, like a lot of fans kept asking, what are you going to say at the beginning of the podcast? I, I can't say you know, through the why or no more, you know, and I made that. That was me. Nobody told me to do that or what to say or how to say it. That was just something that we did. Drop the mic is something you created. Imagine if we couldn't bring it on the show all of a sudden. Yeah. Right. So 
you know, it was tough, but it was something that we felt needed to be done. Um, I love the fact that we're all happy. That's number one. It wasn't anything where we, man, we we got to convince Mike. Or, man, <laughs> hey, we got to sit down and KB, we got to really get him on pay. We didn't have to do anything, and I think that was my favorite thing because when you have four people with four different livelihoods and four different families and things, it, it it's not always this this seamless. Yeah. Sometimes it is two, two want to go, two want to stay, three want to go, one want to. And the fact that we didn't have to do that, was really comforting and it really felt like the right thing to do Mm -hmm. and um to be here um to have support that we've had Uh, our team has been wonderful and gracious they're here in chicago they help put everything up the communication has been one of a kind we got anthony sitting behind the Mm -hmm. monitor and he don't even you know he right here um austin is empowered like this is a beautiful thing austin said yesterday he loves that setup so much, he wished he could be there every day. Like, <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, he said, he I got, got the four screens. Smile like, like, he's right happy. Now. He is happy as hell to sit at that desk yeah. with all the screens that he has. And you, What's we up? talked about you all day. You know why? Because one of the luxuries we have in this studio is a damn cafe. And this <laughs> man yesterday, it was a snowstorm in Chicago. The cafe wasn't open. And he was like, what? <laughs> how could they not be? How could they not drive through a snowstorm to feed me? <laughs> he said, they're going to hear about this next time I'm here. Right. <laughs> Till this day, my egg muffins is free. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, we've all, and most of our fans, dog, you got to understand. And I mean this wholeheartedly. My entire life, I've watched ESPN. My yeah. entire life. My entire life, I've watched ESPN. Do I watch it as much? Did I watch it as much as I got older and it's becoming a job? Obviously not. Because there was a point where every morning I, I, I was hearing certain voices. We don't watch TV like that anyway. But you know, it's new age. It's ESPN. You know, Peyton Manning, one of the greatest, if not the greatest quarterback of all time, sat, talked with us, mm-hmm. recorded with us. He knows us by name. That's crazy. That is still, I feel like. <laughs> I don't know. Just having that picture in my phone, it's just like anytime I'm anywhere, I know I could pick, put like I could pull this picture out, and that's a conversation because it's just so many people that love the football and they know who Peyton Manning is. Like he's a legend. He, you know? He's known outside of football now. Right. Somebody referenced him as a guy that be in all the commercials. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. And that's like, oh yeah. You definitely do see him in all. We're getting older, the man. We're now. getting older. Somebody found out that we're working with Peyton Manning in. in their reaction was, oh, that's the dude that be in all the commercials. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> if that's how you know him, then sure. But, yeah, man, and all in all, um, feel good, uh, no regrets, and this feels like where we want to be, where we need to be, and everything feels right. Everything every, everything feels right, man. I, I, I have not one complaint. Mm-hmm. I'm just happy to go forward and uh, see what else happens. How you feeling, KB? I feel great. Uh, it was something. The whole process. It was. Um, but what you said is true because uh, we were in situations previously where a big life decision had to be made between the four of us. And, and the thing I'm referencing is that we were close to moving to New York to continue oh, our yeah, careers. Yeah. Yep. And that, there was hesitancy from the group. Few people said yes, few people said no, and obviously we're collective. We're not doing nothing without all of us being here. And we decided to stay home in Chicago. Now, luckily, it worked out. Pandemic hit. We it, greatest, it been off greatest anyway. decision ever. Uh, yeah, but um, <laughs> this one wasn't like that. Yeah, I was like, all right, we have our options. What do we prioritize? Who puts us in the right position to do what we want to do? And Omaha was the one that was head and shoulders above the competition. Competition. Yeah. Um, so we made that decision, and it was, let's get to work. And and now we here. Like, the last. Three months of setting everything up, the meetings, the conversations, the contracts, all of that stuff brought us to this moment. We're now, for the people at home, we're back on our normal schedule. Yes. And that's all I, I really care about. You I care about see us putting on Tuesday. Yes, sir. See us on Tuesday. See us on Saturday. Put the content together. Watch hoops. Enjoy the, 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 the relationship with the guys because that's all this really is at the end of the day. And um, continue to grow. Continue to grow. That's that's the other part that makes me so happy. Is like my mind. It, it's like a first of all, it's a relief. Let's be honest. Contract situations, no matter who you are, what you are, it's always going to be something that can be anxious. A, yeah, it can. It can, make, it's, it can put something on you because you know I, I don't care who you are. Even in LeBron James, I'm sure it's like, man, what we doing? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's just it's just <laughs> the reality. Uncertainty um, is not always comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another mic is another mic is <laughs> um, 
They just come out of nowhere, yeah. too. And I know they a lot of people. They be hitting, though. That was, that's that was perfect. Though. That was perfect oh, timing. Yeah, was. Um, and I know a lot of people probably look at it. Man, y'all one of the top podcasts. Y'all going to be good. Yeah, you're right. We're going to be good regardless of what we do. But definitely want to know what you're doing how we're going to do it so you can start to formulate. And to have that off now and to be back in these seats doing this with it. It's crazy that this is every episode yeah. this, this yeah, every feels day, like they can't see a special yeah we are like, in vegas yes. and super yeah, yeah no this is they this is life it, understand how much space we literally have <laughs> yes, like, compared to the last one is crazy i literally feel like i want to say man i felt claustrophobic in that last space because yeah. i back up a little bit i'm hitting the door they yes. were seeing the yeah. doors you yeah. they don't know where no they don't know where exit or entrance is based we off had this somebody shot. feet right there because we didn't have <laughs> oh, enough space yeah. to push yeah. it back yeah. up the very last we can have a 10 person audience in here we really want it legitimately legitimately could have a live audience we have a little live show yeah, yeah. Um, and we have more space after like outside of this we got a couple more offices where the people at home uh we're gonna put together more content mm-hmm. in 2024 than we've ever done before because we have like this is not just a studio spot this is a full-on office yeah where where my goal is to get some tvs on the wall do some reactions uh get a computer we Maybe already talking about watch alone watch alone we're gonna stream from the office collectively like skits and every sky's the limit like we can do anything we want yes me and d mills might have to put together a show me and it's kb coming. should put together a debate show where me we and debate. D. Mills was talking about getting a little stove hooked up over there <laughs> we <laughs> should we should have a show where we debate non-basketball shit we mm-hmm. don't even. We just casual fans debating why this team gonna win a Stanley Cup. <laughs> are, you, are, are you Messi or Ronaldo? A Ronaldo, because you. I'm Messi. Messi. <laughs> Let's get it. We, yeah. we can do it. Let's put the show together. Uh, but no, no, nonetheless, uh, we want to say to the people at home, we appreciate all of the support throughout this journey, because uh, it. I mean, the 21st is our last episode, and it's during the middle of the season. I know for the people that are very true to Tuesdays and Saturdays, it's been different. But here we are. We back. We appreciate y'all being patient with us as we try to hit this next chapter. And this is page one of the next chapter, really. Yeah. Uh, we got so many new things that are coming. For We're sure. excited about. And I would just tell the fans. I heard Mike watching basketball yesterday, so he's Damn, committed yeah. for the first time. This is crazy. I want to ask our people at home to also, you know, understand that this is a new chapter. Be accepting. Open up your minds just a little bit. I know a lot of you, you know what I mean? Like, for example, when we start the show and I say numbers on the board, yeah, it's not going to hit and pop like like the old one. I I get it. So we got to get used to it, though. It's going to be new. You know what I mean? The studio, it ain't the same. We don't have the moral behind us. You know what I mean? It's a different tone and everything. But it's it's an incredible studio. So let's just take some time. um, and, And I promise you. It's y'all gonna love it. Is that Aaron Yeager? Yeah, I brought him. Wow. I, I I love this set so much that I took off my own set and brought it here. And can you guess those two wrestlers? Is that Kane and Big Show? Yeah. But that's wow. Big Show before he was the Big Show for real wrestling. He's got he got a full head of hair. It's called his name is The Giant. That's R- Kane. Royal Rumble coming up. That's Kane before the mask. We we locked in? What do you mean? To the Royal Rumble. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, word. Let's watch it all together. We going, going nuts. Nuts. we going nuts. That was kind of like, I, I, I kind of wanted that to be my first stream. Oh. Oh. D Milly underscore underscore on Twitch, I guess. Now that you put it now that no two two. You know no our two community. Two. We got you, the know, you know our community. Now yeah. that you put it out here, you done open up a can of worms that you're going to have to commit they to. They put it be in your DMs yeah, every day. Every day. When are you going to stream? When are you going to stream? Hey, we just go Best Buy and we can walk around the Best Buy store. You need this. You need this. You need this. And, and put it on get, a Hawk Brothers card. Put or get you a Best Buy uh, credit card. Oh, true. We want to say for the people home again, we appreciate y'all. Uh, we'll see y'all again on Tuesday with another episode of Numbers on the Board. Hit those likes so we can kill that. Oh yeah, yeah. On the Hit the episode. likes, subscribe, go to Spotify, go to Apple. We want all the momentum. Shannon Sharp, count your days, my boy. We want that number one spot in basketball podcast. I know you had Cat Williams, and that did a m- fifty million, <laughs> but we want it. So, and all, all of our home. relationships, all of our friends, uh, the NBA per- connect. Man, come on, yeah. right here. This I'm, is I'm at to send out some. This text. is the we, this is official. this is the studio we want y'all in. Shams, bring, come back. Yes, we, on, can, like, we can we can get you in here comfortably, Sean. We last last studio yeah, we wanted people in there, but we was also like, oh, it's gonna be a little tight. Yeah, you got to park in the back, but you got to come around. <laughs> oh. You got to you got to get the, the door locked a little bit. A <laughs> much certain bigger way. parking lot now. Uh, much bigger parking lot. <laughs> and we got food here. You want to work out? We can yeah, take we it to the gym. gym. We, we can work out in shower all that. <laughs> oh no! no please, <laughs> to get us out of here. You talking Bro. about showering? We love y'all. See y'all Tuesday, man. See y'all Tuesday. <laughs>